Coors, the beer with a difference worth tasting. Coors is the one. Hardee's, where good people go for good food. The Schofield Auto Dealerships, Mercedes, Jaguar, Porsche, Audi, Acura, Pontiac, GMC, Mercur, and Lincoln Mercury. And by Lennox, for all your heating and cooling needs. Now, here with all the action is Bruce Hurdle. For all your heating and cooling needs. Now, here with all the action is Bruce Hurdle. Houston may have the granddaddy, but New Orleans is the mecca. The Louisiana Superdome opened in 1975. Over 76,000 can watch football under a roof that covers nearly 10 acres and stands 27 stories above the floor. It's already housed three Super Bowls, and next spring will be the host for its second Final Four. It's the venue where the Saints come marching in, and upon entering it last night was the inspiration for Shocker defensive coordinator Bain Henson, who mused somewhat in awe about how much wheat they could store in it. Such is the perspective of a Kansan in New Orleans. Good evening, everybody. I'm Bruce Hurdle, along with former Shocker Dick Pine tonight, Wichita State, and Tulane coming in one and three and one and two, respectively, the Shockers after a loss last week at Iowa State and Tulane at Mississippi. But, Dick, as you take a look at the Wichita State schedule, there are some clubs on there, the Arizona States of the world, the Florida States, that the Shockers simply don't match up with and probably won't win football games against. This, however, is not the case with Tulane. That is definitely not the case, Bruce. Both these offenses can really move the ball. Both can score an awful lot of points. If Wichita State has the ability to stay with this team in the first quarter, I think you're going to see a good high-scoring game. When you talk about Tulane, you talk about offense, and it starts and pretty much finishes with the quarterback, number 10, a sophomore, Terrence Jones, and this young man is versatile. He can run the option with authority and can throw the football, and when he does, this is his main man, Mark Zeno. They are hailing him as a potential All-American here at Tulane. As for Wichita State, it looks like to be a story on the offensive line. They are 19 mans bigger, or 19 pounds bigger per man against the Tulane defensive line, and if they can control the offensive pit, it looks like they could move the football offensively. Well, that's true. It's the old story you've heard in every game. It's who controls the line of scrimmage. This time, I think the Shockers really have a good advantage on offense, and we start moving that ball, uh, it's just going to keep us in the game all the way. So it's the Wichita State Shockers in the green wave of Tulane tonight from the Dome in New Orleans. And we'll be back with all the play-by-play -play action when we return. We here in Kansas take a lot of things for granted in our daily lives. It seems we're always looking for guidance in things that affect our families. We're also looking for the kind of information from which to form quality decisions. Most of all, we're looking for dependability in the people we deal with, in the people who have accepted the responsibilities of leadership. In the next few months, we're going to be taking a look at the way Eyewitness News has established a whole new standard for news. When everything depends on it, here's Channel 12 leading the way. In the winter of 1863, a young entrepreneur of Scottish and Cherokee descent founded a trading post near the Arkansas rivers. During the Civil War, the post became a refuge for fleeing Indians. Trappers and traders would soon be beating a path to his door, a path that would one day bear his name as the greatest cattle trail in history. Jesse Chisholm, author of The Trading Post Turned City and charter member of the Wichita Business Hall of Fame, a salute from Junior Achievement of Wichita. Wichita State has lost the toss. Tulane has won it, and they have elected to receive. A crowd of about 30,000 expected to be on hand tonight as the Shockers one and three on the season after a big blowout of San Francisco State early three straight losses and the Tulane Green Wave after a win against Vanderbilt a loss against Texas Christian and a loss last week against Mississippi one and two on the year. Those are the deep men for the Green Wave of Tulane to the near side is number 21 that is Maurice Nelson. And to the far side, number 81, will be Marvin Cephas. Brad Fleeman to kick it away, and we're just about ready to go from the Superdome. Hope you enjoy it along the Kansas broadcasting system. A high kick comes down at 10 at the 10-yard line. It's fumbled. And then picked up. Nice move to the 30, and he's breaking it up along the right-hand side. Finally run out of bounds at the 40 is number 21, Maurice Nelson. So already, Dick Klein, a battle of field position, is taken... Tulane into the advantage. Well, that's right, a battle of field position, and right now the Shockers are 0 for 1. This is where the defense really has to stand and just fight. As I mentioned before, if we can stay in this game early, we're going to have a
a good chance of going all the way with it. Wichita State last week shut down a potent Iowa State running game throughout most of the first half and into the second half before giving way. First man through is the fullback, number 32, Rodney Hunter, and Hunter is in Wichita State territory across the 40 before he's finally knocked down from behind. Well, there's a good strong run. There's no doubt about that, but maybe it's the nervousness of the Shockers. We did make a lot of arm tackles, and a few guys should have had them right there. So Tulane comes out quickly. An option football team. Jones moves well down the lines of scrimmage from either direction, throws well on the run. From the single setback this time. On the near slot, that's Marvin Allen in motion. They give the first man through again and breaking it up the middle to the that's 15. Go. And in the end zone for a touchdown. Rodney Hunter cracked it for 39 yards. And so on two plays, the team that is ranked ninth in the country in total offense, taking about 55 yards, and Tulane has gotten up early. And, of course, that is the worst fear of Ron Chisbar and his Wichita State staff. Well, that sure is the worst fear. So the Shockers trail early by a score of six to nothing and what a turnabout from a week ago when they were so impressive against Iowa State. Danny Girl into a attempt the extra point. Off the hold of Chris Scott, the kick is up and the kick is good. So quickly, three plays into the game as a matter of fact, Tulane has struck and they lead it by a score of seven to nothing. If you made hamburger patties the way most places make hamburger patties, you'd discover your thick, meaty burgers were suddenly dry, flat, and lifeless. So at Hardee's, we developed a way to make our patties gently, so they cook up thicker, full of natural juices. It's a complicated machine, but we can give you an idea of the principle it's based on. The new Quarter Pound Burgers from Hardee's, a little closer to home. Hi, I'm Roger Cornish. Here are a few of the stories that Eyewitness News will be covering for you in the coming week. Governor Carlin comes to Wichita pushing for a change in property classification, which could have a huge impact on the property taxes you pay. City Commissioner and Congressional Candidate Bob Knight talks about an anti-drug program with area high school students. And some other candidates, Tom Docking and Mike Hayden, who want to be your governor, talk to representatives of cities from across the state. So join us for these stories and much more on Eyewitness News this week at noon, 5, 6, and 10. Well, Dick, we are expecting a track meet, and already Tulane with about a 55-yard dash in two plays, up 7 to nothing. Danny Girl to kick it away. Receiving it on the far side will be David Smith. The tonight starting tailback takes it at the 10. He's to the 20, cuts up to the 25, and he is finally wrestled down under a sea of green. So Wichita State will set him up and put him down offensively right now. Their first offensive series of the evening, trailing in the ballgame already 7 to nothing. Here was the touchdown, second play from scrimmage, Rodney Hunter cutting it up the middle, and boy, he had lots of daylight. He had lots of daylight. A tremendous block by the end on the linebacker. Uh, no coverage from the outside to help, and the guy is just off to the races. Showed good speed at the point of attack, up through the hole quickly. And from then on, it was a foot race to the end zone, which, of course, he won. Shockers on first down. Second man through is David Smith. He picks up three before being knocked down. This is where those hogs really have to go to work. We can't let them get far ahead like you mentioned, and we need a big one right here. Knocked down by Dalvin Ben. 6'1", 249-pound senior out of New Orleans. Keep in mind that Wichita State, along the offensive line, 19 pounds per man heavier than the Tulane defensive front. They run three down linemen with two backers up tight. McDonald calling the signals on second and seven. Fumble There's a and fumble. Tulane has it. Tulane's ball. So Wichita State stumbles out of the blocks, both defensively and offensively. And as we take a second look, Brian never got a handle on it. No, he sure didn't. Uh, can't say it was a bad snap. He just started moving out a little bit before he had the ball. Linebacker Troy Wetzel on the recovery, and Tulane is back and knocking at the Shocker 29. Wetzel getting the starting job this week over Chris Marshall, who had been the starter through the first three games, already up with an important turnover. So Terrence Jones... Brings his green wave set. Man coming in motion. They give it up the middle. Rodney Hunter. And his flags are down on the play. 
Drags it across the 25 to the 24 yard line before Kirk Allen knocked him down. Here's how they line up. Terrence Jones, fifth in the country in total offense, coming in. The sophomore out of suburban New Orleans, that quarterback. Rodney Hunter, who's already laid a great deal of damage on the Shocker defense. Marvin Allen, the tailback. We'll see him in motion throughout this ball game a great deal. They like to run the one back set. Mark Zeno and the rest. Then across the front, Lockley, Ripoll, Wall, Hirschfeld, and Howley. Not great size across the front. They go 269 and 248 at the tackles, 249 each at the guards, and 248 at the center. So Tulane, not a big ball club that we have already seen that they are indeed quick. Illegal motion. Knocks it back to first and 15 for Tulane. In motion, Marvin Allen. They bring the option this way. Jones will tuck it up, keep it across the 30, the 25, to the 20 over his own man, and has knocked out of bounds finally at the 17-yard line. But very important for Wichita State to be able to get good, quick reads, Dick, on the option early, and if that's any indication, they are slow to adjust. No, they are definitely slow to adjust on that one. Mark Duckins, Tony Manning, and Doug Maxwell across the three-man front. They play the backers tight, the outside backers, with Alan Smith and Terry Green, Kirk Allen, and Jim Storm, two good ones in the middle. Jackson Cooper, Bats Young, and Normore playing hurt in the secondary. First down on the play. First man through is Hunter. Breaks a tackle before Kirk Allen finally wrestles him down with a host of white shirts, but not before he's wrestled down at the 10-yard line. It'll be a gain of seven on the play, and thus far, Tulane is having their way moving the football. They definitely are. It's just hard to bring a big, strong runner like that down when you're grabbing around the, as high as they are right there. That was actually number 22, Melvin Adams. 6'1", 213-pound sophomore out of Jennings, Louisiana. Tulane last week, excuse me, Dick, got up early 10 to nothing on Mississippi before succumbing 35 to 10. And Mississippi today proved to be a very good nemesis for Georgia, losing a tight ball game. Second down and five. They're at the 10-yard line. First man through is Adams, and he falls forward to about the seven-yard line. Well, it's awful early to play this, but if we're going to tighten our belts, Bruce, we better do it right now. Not a prodigious start for Wichita State. If you look at Fane Henson in the middle, clapping his hands, he's the defensive coordinator, Henry Sroka, the strength coach on the right, and, of course, Chuck Porter on the near angle of the camera. Third and one, they can actually pick up the first down, but looking for more is Adams as he stumbles and is finally knocked off balance at the two-yard line. It'll be a first and goal for Tulane. By talking to the Wichita State coaches yesterday, and incidentally, they were got in here late four hours from St. Louis, so they had a long day of traveling. They felt com confident against this Tulane group, said they would struggle early against the option on defense, but they've only seen the option once, and it's just about ready to be 14 to nothing. Allen in motion. Fullback carries. Looks like they could have a possible fumble. And Wichita State has recovered. We did not see the ball come loose, but Kirk Allen. Broken hand and all comes up with the football, and so the Shockers' defense stiffens, backed up to their own goal line, and Tulane comes away empty. So a big turnaround for Wichita State. Kirk Allen coming up with the fumble, and so the Shockers from their own one will operate again. Looked like a good, clean handoff. Adams, there the ball popped out off a good hit in the middle. We did not see who got the helmet on the football, but a good... Forum tackle, knock the ball free, and Wichita State has the football. They'll run from the eye. Stan Walmeyer with David Smith dotting the eye. Smith has it, and he battles through for a couple of yards. Good blocking on the front line there. Shockers have McDonald lining up at quarterback. He's about 90% after staggering through much of the week again with injury. Stan Walmeyer. Actually, David Smith now in a tailback. Anthony Hardy, Brock Fewen, and Joe Miles, the receiving core. Bruce, Kevin Robbins is limping after that play. I don't know how long they'll let him in there or just how bad he's hurt. Scott Lee, Dave Pander at center, Roger Fultz, and John Pratt, the strong tackle. Shockers have second and seven, operating from their own four-yard line. And we're going to get a delay of the game. Now, that's just... That's inexcusable at your own goal line, and... You've got to be more organized than that. You can't afford half the distance to the goal line at this point. 
Well, fortunately, it's only about a yard and a half or two yards down there, but like you said, <laughs> we just can't have that this time of the game. David Cruz, Ron Chismar right there. Cruz, who was very impressive against Iowa State in throwing two touchdown foul. passes. Delay, offense, second down. As we get the call. If you just joined us, Tulane took the ball 55 yards on the first two plays from scrimmage. Put seven on the board. The Shocks turned it over. They were knocking again at the one before another fumble. Gave it back to Wichita State. David Smith out to the six-yard line. We're going to see this young man quite a bit. Smith coming into the ball game. With a 5.4 yard for carry average. Here's the very small but tough defensive line for Tulane. Sean Ned, Dalvin Ben getting his first start. Richard Sauter and Tony Hanna left to right. Hulbert. Wetzel getting his first start at inside linebacker. Harvey, who's the defensive leader, with, leads the team in tackles and took his fan on the outside. Third and five for Wichita State. McDonald rolls to his right. He's got room to run. Not for long. The door closed quickly, and he was knocked down on the play. Nicely pursued by Tony Hanna from the weak side. And so McDonald and the Shocker offense will adjourn to the sideline to talk it over. We'll see Dave Armagas for the first time in the ball game. He'll punt from his own end zone. Dave ought to love punting here. There's no win like there is back home. Deep to receive is Maurice Nelson. Gets the kick away. It's a line drive. Nelson backpedaling. Takes it his own 42. To midfield. Nice move cutting back against the grain. And he gets it inside the 45 to the 44 yard line. And that's where Tulane will start. Can't emphasize it enough. And it's almost cliche in football. But field position so important. And of course that's what a lot of the shocker coaches were musing over yesterday. That field position may ultimately win a ball game where the two teams match up fairly evenly, which seems to be the case tonight. The Shocks did a good job covering on that punt. Whenever you have a line drive like that, it really sets up the run back. And the Shocks got down, broke down well, and covered it properly. Terrence Jones brings the Green Wave set on this, their third set of plays from scrimmage here in the first quarter. They lead 7-0. On the option, bringing it down the near side, cutting it up as Marvin Allen taking the pitch and driving across the 35-yard line before he's knocked down by Chris Batsion. And Randall Cooper on the play. And the ball actually popped loose as we'll take a look again. But great execution by Terrence Jones. He's very versatile at the quarterback in the slot. Well, you can see the linebacker had the quarterback covered. It's just a question of not getting up there to get that pitch man. Nice back by Randy Cooper, though. Stood him up. Just shy of the first down at second and one. Marvin Allen in the slot. He goes in motion. Here comes the option going the other way. Jones cuts it off at the 30, and he's finally knocked down hard. In the middle by Jimmy Storm. 5'11", 222-pound junior out of Glendale, Arizona. That's good for the first down, however, and Tulane is on the move again in Shocker territory. Well, we're seeing exactly what we thought we'd see. They don't hesitate to run the option ball, Bruce. Haven't seen him go up top yet. Oh, we're saving that one. First and ten from the 30. Adams. The carrier. Weidenkiller knocked him down. Or Jim Storm actually shot through there. Good defensive play. Jim did a good job on that. Really filled properly. Fell forward, however, for a pickup of two and a half, three yards. It'll bring a second and seven. You know, we're in a situation again early in the game when the defense is on the field a lot. And we usually break down if this keeps on going. 7-0 Tulane leading. They scored on their first possession. There's the ball in the air. And it's caught by the eye back Marvin Allen, who came in motion and went to the flat. Jones likes to throw off the move. That time it was just a quick look pattern as we take another look. The man in motion will catch the football. Or check that. That's the tight end, number 84, Larry Rout. He's finally knocked down. Not before Tulane picks up a first down at the 21. So moving the football again are the green wave of Tulane. An independent one and two on the season. Back in the ball game is Rodney Hunter who did the damage on two carries from the first possession for Tulane. And again, Tulane just moving Wichita State out of there. 
The offensive tackles are doing a great job of tying up our linebackers. Pickup of seven on first down, and boy, that really gives your offense so many options on second and short, as opposed to second and long, obviously. You put the football up, you can air it out a little bit, open things up. But Tulane has had great success running between the tackles. Rodney Hunter, the single setback. Jones will keep it at the 10 to the 5. Dives, fumble, shockers. Shocker ball. He got a little cute with it that time, and acrobatic as it was, it ended up costing Tulane, and so twice they have come away empty-handed at the goal line. And Tulane, who should be ahead by three touchdowns, instead has given Wichita State life here in the first period. He's just a little bit too cute. Now, there's no doubt about him wanting to get in the end zone on this play. But if he would have taken it on the one, they'd still have the ball and a touchdown. Ronnie Gould is the player who came through and just by being in the right place at the right time actually knocked it loose. He fell on it, and the Shockers have it from the 20. Brian McDonald calling the signals. Walmeyer and Smith are set. Anthony Hardy to the near side. They instead give to Smith across the 20. Spins, breaking a tackle, tried to break another, and got three tough yards. A good, strong move by Smith. Wichita State can't lose their patience right here. Defense nope. has been on the field a great deal. They want a good ball control drive right now. Give them a chance to catch their breath on the defensive sidelines and give the offense a little confidence. Second and seven after the three-yard pickup from Smith. Viewing in the slot, Hardy is wide. They shift to the eye. This is Smith. He's met at the 25-yard line and knocked down there on the play. Bruce, we're doing an awful lot of handing the ball off to the second man through. And no matter how big and strong those offensive linemen are, you're just allowing too much time for that back to get to the hole. Richard Harvey on the stop. Leading tackler for Tulane. Number 95. You'll be hearing his name quite a bit tonight. Brian McDonald on the verge of becoming the most prolific passer in Wichita State history. The numbers you see there indicate his prowess through the early part of the season. Big third and four for Shocks. From the pro set, McDonald looking across the middle. It's knocked down and intercepted. Eric Thomas with a tremendous job keeping the ball alive. Took it away from Anthony Hardy as the ball looked to be thrown a little bit off the mark. And Thomas comes up with the turnover as we get another look. Had time to throw. And as you can see, the ball was actually led a little bit too much. But what a nice effort by Eric Thomas out of Sacramento, California. It was just tremendous concentration on Thomas's part that time. That so ball bounced around three times. Bruce. We've seen three turnovers in this ball game. Two by Tulane, one by the Shocks. He's still got 5.26 to go in what has been an eventful first period of action. Harvey carrying the football from the single setback. The tendency on Tulane, and this is grist for your mill at home, is when they bring the man in motion, any type of motion, their tendency at 9 out of 10 times is to run the football. When they leave the set, the slot man or the wing man set, Eight out of ten times, they have gone to the pass. That is how predictable they have been through the first three games of the season. Whether or not that tendency has been corrected tonight remains to be seen. On the option, nicely read. Just a great defensive play. That's the way this team has to play the option. Marvin Allen carried the football. Chris Holt made the initial stop and threw him for a loss of about six yards on the play. That'll bring up a third down for Tulane. Coming down the line of scrimmage, stepping back in the quick pitch. But Allen nowhere to go as Chris Holt plugs the gap. Chris Badsion coming in there along with Mark Duckins and Kirk Allen and a host of others. So big third down play for Tulane from the Shocker 38. Third and about 13. Jones back to pass. Being hurried from the weak side. Looking down the middle for Mark Zeno, high school teammate and a potential All-American, and so Tulane has come up empty-handed. And number Z, as they call him here, was open all the way on that play. And so we'll see a punting situation. Chris Scott in to boot it away, and the Shockers, in all likelihood, will start from deep in their own territory as Scott will look for the angle. Anthony Hardy, the junior college transfer in to receive this kick. 
Ball will come down at the five, and Tulane should spot it, and they do at the one-yard line. Nope, they let it go through. My, oh, my, what a mistake that was, and so the Shocks will get it at the 20. How did that get through a wall of green? That ball just took the wrong bounce. I thought for sure it would start out in the hole again. <laughs> so the Shockers with a huge break will start from their own 20. And that is how things have gone. When you start singing the praises of breaks and the fact that they have it only at their own 20, it has been all Tulane in this first period. As we get another look, five, six players around the ball, how it ever got out of there. It was kicked in. There you go. Overzealousness on Tulane's part. Gives the Shocks field position at the 20. They trail 7 to nothing. David Smith, single setback. Knocked down from behind on a good defensive play. Trailing it. The shocks are just a little slow at getting that hole. The hole is there. And Velasco Smith certainly would be the remedy to that problem. And my, how they're missing that young man out of Tallahassee, Florida. Still the seventh leading rusher in the nation, David Smith. Certainly a very capable backup, but not as quick to the line of scrimmage and getting to that hole as Velasco Smith. Second and nine for the Shockers at the 21. Smith carries it again, trying the right side. Breaks back, but he's knocked down hard. Richard Harvey on the stop. And Smith gets up to think about it. And it'll bring a third and seven for Wichita State. And it has been a conservative early it's period for the shot. Just been an extremely conservative first period. I'd like to see us come out second or third down, first down, and throw the ball. We're getting into a rut, it seems, already. Chismar says that he wanted to establish the run. They have not been successful in doing that as they have yet to pick up a first down in this, their fourth possession from scrimmage. From the pro set, Fewen in motion to the near side. McDonald drops straight back to pass. Trying to set up what looks to be a screen off in the flat. Walmeyer, he's spinning, trying to get to the first down, and second effort gives it to him. A fine effort by the young man out of Norton, Kansas, by way of Hutchison Community College. Dan Walmeyer picks up the initial first down for the Shockers and good piece of a good perseverance right here by Brian McDonald. Good patience. He waited and the play finally opened up. It's fun to watch Stan carry the ball. He goes back to a Pete DiDonato era when I played. He'll just put the ball down and hit you. And that's fun. Back at antiquity. Oh, yes. <laughs> Actually, back in the era of Hank Fulberg when Wichita State football was perennial Missouri Valley champions and contenders back in the early 60s. Broadcasting partner tonight to climb is David Smith. Breaks it up across the 35 and we saw good movement by the right side of the line that time for Wichita State. Dave Panter, Scott Moody, and Kevin Robbins moving folks out of the way. We saw a real good movement and that's what the Shockers need to do right now. They need to take this ball down three and four yards at a time if necessary and get a score, keep the defense off the field for a while. Fortunately, it's temperature controlled in here but it's still hot down the field. Second down, two yards for the Shockers. They'll go from the single setback. Now they shift Walmeyer back to the pro set from the slot. Hardy and Fuen. Walmeyer for the first down, and the Shockers will be moving from the 42. So the Shocks looking for the ball control, trying to move it down the field, on the ground. We've seen the ball in the air once, and that led to an interception. Incidentally, the 11th by Tulane. They are third in the country in interceptions thus far on the season, so they're a very opportunistic defense, but a defense that bends a great deal. 7 and nothing. Shockers trail. 120 left in the first period. David Smith will try the right side, cutting it back up. He's across the 45 to the 47-yard line before he's finally knocked down on the play by Sean Ned. That was a good move by David. He saw that there was no room to run outside and just turned it back in for, what, six or seven yards. That will take five on it anyway. Junior college transfer out of Cisco Junior College from Dallas, Texas. 6'2", 225, so he packs a punch from the tailback slot. Second and five for the Shockers. They're at the 47. a look at that time with Stan Walmeyer driving across the line of scrimmage on the count is Tony Hanna 6'3", 215 out of Chicago and he met Stan Walmeyer 
fortunate to hold on to the football in this situation. We didn't get a chance to see who missed what up front, but no matter how tough he is, when you need a defensive lineman standing in the hole like that, Bruce, you're not going to go anywhere, obviously. Well, he came right across the left-hand side. Scott Leedy and Kevin Robbins on that near side. So that'll bring up a third down and six. And now we have a whistle on the play as the first quarter has come to a close. So Tulane should be up by three touchdowns, that is. But instead, they're only up seven points. Stay here. Welcome to the Silver Bullet, home of a cold Coors Light. Rob, do you work out? Yeah, I belong to a club. Here's your Coors Light. And I'm thinking about joining a club, but can't seem to find a good enough reason. I mean, is a flat stomach a good enough reason? Nope. Building up my endurance? Nope. <laughs> Big muscles? No. See the club, Rob? Yeah. <laughs> oh, what's the name of that club? No slowing down Rob? with the silver Rob. bullet tonight. On a new car but don't want to pay a lot, now is the time at Schofield Lincoln Mercury. Hi, we're here at Schofield to tell you about the big deals under the big tent. We've got factory-sponsored 2.9 financing on Lynx, Topaz, Capri, Cougar, and the fabulous Mercury XR4Ti. Like this beautiful new Cougar for only $2.99 a month. We've got the cars, and we're out to be the number one dealer in Kansas. Schofield Lincoln Mercury, 7633 East Kellogg. First play of the second period. On third and six, McDonald looking. And not caught by Anthony Hardy. Ball is poorly thrown, and the Shockers will kick it away. Good try by Anthony. Just a little bit short for him. Probably still would have missed the first down. So Armagost will boot it away. And deep to receive it. It'll be Maurice Nelson. Before they moved the scoreboard, Jay, they used to have one big scoreboard right in the middle. It was every punter's ambition to try to hit the scoreboard. Fortunately, that is eliminated. I think Pat McAnally was the only one that was able to do it. Armagost angling it towards the sideline, and it'll fall out of bounds at about the 14-yard line, and that's where Tulane will start. Ray Guy also hit the scoreboard before they moved it off into the respective end zones, we're told. And that's a good punt. That puts Tulane back in the hole for the first time tonight. Indeed, they will start from their own 14-yard line. If you've just joined us, Tulane scored the first time they touched the football on two plays. They went 55 yards and knocked it into the end zone. Seven to nothing. Shockers turned it over. Tulane took it to the one and then turned it back. Then a Brian McDonald interception. Had Tulane knocking again. But as Terrence Jones dove to the end zone, the Shockers came up with yet another fumble. Now Tulane in the second period, moving from their own 14-yard line. First man through is Melvin Adams. He and Rodney Hunter have been shifting back and forth at fullback. He's across the 20 to the 22. Bruce Hurdle, Dick Klein along the Kansas broadcasting system. Glad to have you along tonight. First of three games right here on KBS. He can now be along with you when the Shocks travel to Tulsa and also when they head to Tempe to take on Arizona State, which should be an interesting evening. That should definitely be an interesting evening. <laughs> Good trip, anyway. New man at quarterback oh. is number 14, Jerome McIntosh, and he nearly completed his first pass to Randall Cooper, who came up just shy. And it'll set up a third and seven. Good effort on this play by Randall. The ball's overthrown. Randall comes back hard and just has the ground probably knock the ball loose or else we're, we're back in business or we're in business for the first time, I should say. Larry Routh, the intended receiver, already has one reception on the evening. Third down and a long seven. As McIntosh stays in the ball game. Numbers illustrated there. Bringing the man in motion, that's Michael Pierce. They send the option the other way, cutting it up, and finally knocked down hard. Chris Babsiong on the play. Kirk Allen over there, as was Jim Storm and a host of others. So the Shockers, with good lateral pursuit right there on the option, they cover it for the first time really on the evening. And so Tulane will be forced to kick it away. The Shocks should have it back in decent field position, their first such foray of the evening. 
Tulane is holding through right now. If that man is in motion, they've been running the ball. Chris Scott to boot it away. Anthony Hardy deep to receive a high kick hanging. Hardy takes it at the 37, trying to outrun the coverage. Gets to the 40. If he could have cut back, he would have had an avenue, but Tulane covers well. As Troy Wetzel makes the stop, and so the Shockers will start from their own 38 yard line. This has been a big quarter for Wichita State. Of course, a lot of that rung up against San Francisco State and Moorhead State. The latter, of course, we don't have to chronicle of 35 to 3 at the intermission and then end up falling 36 to 35, the largest deficit ever come back against a Division I school. So Wichita State with a record that certainly they'd like to forget. First down from the 38, David Smith has met at the line of scrimmage, and thus far, Wichita State's advantage up front is not being evidenced by the yards they're gaining carrying the football. Well, Bruce, I have to believe it's not being advantaged, like you said, only because it is the second man through. You know, we're going up, our line is going up against a little smaller line, but a quicker line, and it's asking a lot for those big hogs on our team to hold those blocks. Second and a long nine for the Shockers, Brian McDonald. With Stan Walmeyer and David Smith. Now something is not copacetic. I don't think David Painter liked the, uh, the way the ball was sitting, or maybe he's asking for a new ball. Chances are they probably are doing that. They use different footballs. Tulane probably using a certain ball to their liking on their offensive sets in Wichita State the same. A lot of times in different regions of the country, different programs use different balls. And of course, you have the option of using whatever kind of football you want when you have possession. Second and nine now from their own 39. Play action. McDonald forced from the pocket. He's across the 40 and he finally goes down after picking up a yard and a half across the 41 to the 42 yard line. Well, we saw what we wanted from the press box anyway. We saw the attempted pass on second down. Unfortunately, Tulane just did a great job of defense. Man. Chris Marshall on the stop he is the regular starting inside linebacker for Tulane. 12 03 and counting down in this, the first half of action. Second quarter, 7 0 Tulane leading. And the Shockers, frankly, fortunate that it is that score. Third and six across the middle and good for the first down. The tight end, Jack Owens, on the reception. So McDonald strikes for his first completion of the evening. He is now one for three, and that pass was good for about seven yards. It's a first down for the Shockers, their third of the ball game. Carson, California, 6'4", 225, a senior. He's been relegated to backup duty behind fifth-year senior Joe Miles to a large extent this year, but of course, getting some playing time tonight. They'll start it from the slot, view into the near side. Now they'll shift back into the pro set. Wide left is Anthony Hardy on first down. McDonald put it on the carpet, and quick to respond was Tulane. And with the good bounce, fortunately, the ball bounced right back into McDonald's hands. Sean Ned was right there, as you shall see. Brian really never had control, and that is the second miscue from center the Shocks have had to endure in this ballgame. Ryan McDonald beating Sean Ned up close in person. 11 minutes counting down now in the second period. 7 0 to lane leading. Bruce Hurdle, Dick Klein from the Superdome in New Orleans. Glad to have you along. And Brian doesn't like the look. He's going to take a timeout. And so are we. 7 0 from the Superdome to lane's leading. Shocks are hanging tough. Stay with us. Watch out. It's coming. You're about to get hit with another big heating bill. <laughs> I live in fear of high fuel costs. Move up with Dave Lennox to the Pulse Gas Furnace. The Pulse turns almost 100% of the fuel it uses into heat, and that could cut your winter heating bills almost in half. Attaboy, Dave. Start saving money. Give your Lennox dealer a call. He's in the yellow pages. For sure. Furnishing a place today squeezes the budget. So we shop ABC first. 
top quality brand name, color TVs and stereos. All our furniture, living, dining, and bedroom. And all appliances, ranges, refrigerators, microwaves, washers, and dryers. All rented. To own. From ABC. The rent applies to purchase. No big down payment. All service included. ABC makes furnishing any place. Easy. A snap. ABC makes life better and more affordable. Three convenient locations, east, west, and south. Just a stone's throw from Bourbon Street. Oh. Shockers and tonight. Had a good time there last night, didn't we? And we didn't get any trouble either. Oh, of course not. We were in by seven. Well, I had to be your bodyguard, <laughs> but that's not nothing new for me. I'll take it, baby. All 6'6". Six, six. Oh, what are no. you weighing nowadays? You're not going to tell us that. The svelte 280. <laughs> Second and 14 for Wichita State. Brian McDonald calling the signals to Stan Walmeyer and David Smith. In the pro set, coming in motion near side, Brock Fewitt. McDonald will be hurried, gets it off quickly to Smith. Smith at the 50, breaks a tackle. Into the 45 and falls forward to the 43-yard line. Now market at the 44, nice second effort by the junior college transfer. David Smith seeing his first start tonight in a shotgun uniform, and he capitalizes nicely on this play, but a good, quick read by Brian McDonald. Just an excellent read, an excellent catch, and now he'll just turn the ball up and put his head down. Boy, he just absolutely punished. The first man took his span. That is fun to see. Just fun to watch. Thurston Harrison finally made the stop. So the Shocks have a third and four. From Tulane's 44-yard line. Wichita State starting to move a little bit. They'll sweep it left from the eye. Smith falling forward. And he's going to be about a yard shy of the first down at the 41. Again, good second effort by David Smith. But the defense is getting time to react on that second man through, Dick, and I think that was a good point you brought up earlier. Here's the situation. Unfortunately, we'll have to punt the ball, but if you gave it to the first back coming through that hole, I think we'd have a yard plus without any problems. Ron Chismar will elect for field position here as Armagas will try to hang it up. And put it in the corner. Maurice Nelson again deep to receive as Armagas last minute receptions out of Cape and Mount Carmel. And now a penalty flag is down. And they'll probably move it back five for delay of game. And indeed they will. And there's a penalty you can take when you not hurt you. That just gives them five more yards to punt the ball. Try to get it down close to the end zone. Dead ball foul. Delay. Carol McCoy playing for the cameras. 7-0 Tulane leading. 9-15 remaining in this second period of action. Tulane scored the first time they touched the football. Since then, it has been a comedy of errors. Hangs this one up high, but it's very short. Needs a shocker bounce, but it instead will go out of bounds. And they will mark it at about the 27-yard line. So... Not exactly what he wanted to do. Not at all. A little lack of consistency in our punting game right there. That's been a problem for Wichita State all season long. Their kicking game. Lack of proficiency from either side of the football. Killed them against Toledo. Most no, certainly did. Led to 16 of the 30 points that they put on the board as a direct result of mistakes in the kicking game. And of course, it has not improved much since then. So Tulane operating from their own 33-yard line. Terrence Jones back in at quarterback. Of age Jones one tackle, here. running out of room, all sorts of white shirts, and Chris Batsyong finally puts a good lick on him. Chris just stayed at home and waited for that. That was a beautiful Bats play to see, as far as the defense is concerned. And it'll be a loss of two on the play. Good pursuit by Wichita State right there. What they're looking for on the option is the outside linebacker plugging the hole, depending on which way the ball's going, coming to the slant and playing that quarterback. Quarterback should not get away from the outside linebacker. That time it was Chris Batsyong. A strong safety from Green Bay coming up to make the play. So Tulane will start now, second, and about 10 and a half or 11. Zeno at the 30, and he trips and falls at the 32-yard line. Pick up with about six on play, and it'll bring up a third and four. Good pass protection that time. He had plenty of time to throw. 16 yards a catch for Mark Zeno, just a junior. So big play defensively for Wichita State. They'd like to get the football back. They'll call it third and five, operating from just outside the 32-yard line. This is their passing set. 
Rolling to the right, Jones quickly. Finds Marvin Allen. Allen across midfield. Now they really got far too many yards on that play for what it was designed for. That was a short, quick pass designed for four or five yards, and instead the Shocks don't make the adjustment and end up giving up big yards for the first down. Here it is again. As you can see, they, they sure gave up too many yards. Uh, we had a blitz coming from the backside, and the quarterback probably knew it was coming. They gave the ball right away. Randall Cooper finally dragged him down. Marvin Allen, pretty good out of the backfield. First man through is Rodney Hunter. Tulane operating in Wichita State real estate now. Across the 45 to the 44-yard line. It'll bring up a second and five. You know, at 5'8 and 195, Hunter sure looks like a strong back in there. Absolutely. Low center of gravity, which is one of Velasco Smith's weapons, of course. Second and five, they bring the man in motion. First man through again is Rodney Hunter. It's been pretty basic for Tulane. And they've remained true to their reads, too. When they send a man in motion, they put the ball on the ground. When they leave the man out there in the flank set, they put the ball in the air. We talked earlier about 80 and 90% of the time. I think today it's probably 100% of the time. Indeed it has been. And so we're going to see a third down, third and a long three for Tulane. To the near side is Mario Balistris. In the slot is Zeno. From the set position, now they'll send the man in motion. Bringing the option this way, Jones keeps it, spins to the 40, and he'll be short of the first down. And so for Mac Brown, it'll be decision time, as it'll be fourth and two. Fans want him to go, obviously. It's always what the fans want to do. Mac Brown, the second-year coach, former offensive coordinator at Oklahoma. And the youngest coach in the nation, I believe, in the major college. He just turned 35. And they are definitely going to go for it. And I can't say I wouldn't do the same thing. So big play time for Tulane and Wichita State. They have about two yards to go. Terrence Jones will bring him set at the 40. Allen in motion. Bringing the option and the shock suffered right down. Making the play defensively was Tony Manning. And so the shocks break through across the line of scrimmage, and that's what you want to do against the option. You want to penetrate, slant in the gaps, plug them up, and create havoc. This just couldn't be played any better. An outstanding job by Tony on that. So Wichita State has come up with three big defensive plays in the football game, forcing fumbles backed up to their own goal line, and here on a fourth and two inside of their own territory, they come up with the football. Brian McDonald calling the signals as the Shockers come set at the 42. Second man through again. David Smith seeing plenty of action. He has carried the football easily 10 or 11 times already here in the first half. Through the first period, he was 9 for 32 on the ground, and already we've seen him oh, four or five times here in the second. Shocks will have second and seven from the 45. Seven to nothing, Tulane leads. We're in the second period of action. Bruce Hurdle and Dick Klein from the Superdome in New Orleans. The first of three broadcasts on the Kansas Broadcasting System. A little counter, and boy, I'll tell you, there's no room for that. Very slow developing. And quickly on the play was Troy Wetzel getting his first start at inside linebacker right there. And this just took, could have grown a beard back there waiting for this one to develop. Well, that's when you really miss a Velasco Smith. Well, there's no doubt. And uh, we sure wish Velasco were here tonight. So about third and 13 for the Shockers now. Long 12. From the far hush mark. Straight drop back. McDonald looking. Has time. And he had the man there. But Brock Fewen could not come up with it. Brock was wide open on that play. You'll see probably the replay just a little underthrown. So Brian comes up shy. And he has not thrown the ball well in five or six offerings thus far on the evening. And the Shockers are left to kick it away. We thought it would be an offensive battle. And thus far it has been a question of inability of either offenses to convert on the big play and the defenses have held steadfast thus far. 
Armagast to boot it away. Maurice Nelson off the bounce at his own 14, coming to the near side. And he is going to be plunged under. Another good job of coverage on a line drive punt. Joe Miles down there quickly, along with Kenny Stonebreaker. Part of a crowd of about 30,000. It may not look like that to you, but remember this facility seats upwards of 80,000 for football. Tomorrow it will host the New Orleans Saints and the Washington Redskins. Bruce Davis taking an awful lot of time on those punts. That time they had half a rush. If they ever come with a full rush, they just might get a hold of one. We'll keep an eye on that. Armagast, of course, has had a couple problems receiving snaps this season. He's actually given up a couple of safeties. On first down, Terrence Jones looking, has time, finds the tight end, Larry Rout, and for Rout, that is his second reception of the evening and his 100th career reception as a Green Wave. And that's a nice record to have, 100 receptions in a career at college. Picked it up for good average, so you can see that he runs deeper routes as a tight end. 6-1-2-30. Shows good size as well. Good for nine yards on the play. Second and one. Second and two. Time ticking away in the second period. Man in motion is Allen. Rodney Hunter takes it up the gut before Mark Duckins. Jimmy Storm tripped him up. And it's a first down for Tulane. I tell you, if you're Wichita State, you're breathing heavy sighs of relief that you're not down 21 to nothing as they force two fumbles literally at the goal line in this ballgame. If you're Tulane, you got to be kicking yourselves in the head a little bit. Yeah, you sure do. It should be 21 nothing without a doubt right now. Putting it up. First man on the near side is Marvin Allen, and he's finally knocked out of bounds, but not before they pick up six yards, maybe seven on the play. He moved that pocket very well. Really doesn't give our defensive lineman a chance to get in there. And of course, you can't pin back your ears on a quarterback like Terrence Jones because he's just so mobile back there, and you really got to break down and get in good tackling position once you do get into the backfield. He's facing a second and four. Looking downfield, has a man open in front of Ronnie Gould over there was Mario Balastresi, but he was unable to come up with it. And it'll bring third. Plenty of time to throw the ball again. Just happened to throw it right through his hands. 7-0, Tulane leads. And you've got to think that Wichita State, next time we get the football back, has got to start looking at a little bit of a different offensive scheme. Well, you sure do. You know, we've tried to establish the ground game now for five or six series, and it hasn't worked. On third down, Jones with time, looking up. Zeno is wide open as Randall Cooper was beaten on the play. And you can bet that we will probably see that pattern again as Mark Zeno was out there and moving for six. But he was overthrown by that young man, Terrence Jones. They'll go back, talk about it on the sideline, and we will see Chris Scott once again. And Anthony Hardy deep to receive it. Shocker is looking for some field position here. Hardy should receive it around his own 20. Scott averaging about 38 yards a kick. Hangs this one up. Fair catch called for at the 25-yard line, and that's where the shocks will start it. So trailing 7-0 and with 245 left in what has been a very quick first half of action. The shocks will try to get something going. It's interesting how they've played this game up in the media down here. Trying to figure out whether it was a push for Tulane or a push for Wichita State and who had the proper perspective. Well, no one wanted to take credit for being the team, I guess, in this. The Tulane coach uh, definitely didn't want to look past this game to Florida State. Uh, however, the, the, the media itself had uh, Tulane favored by 18 points. Thus far, they have not lived up to that billing. Although certainly Mac Brown thinks that they probably should have with the two opportunities at the goal line. Eric Gilstrap, the freshman in the ball game for the first time, running with authority to the 30-yard line. Running very well indeed. And this young man showed some prowess last week at Iowa State. Yes, he did. And he starts right off again the same way. There's not much of a hole there. He's just going to make his own. It's no fun being an offensive lineman when you're getting beat up front and beat from the back at the same time. 
Those, cl those cleat marks hurt. His own man, Kevin Robbins, effective making the stop at the 30 after a pickup of six yards. Second and four for Wichita State. Yeah. Man was moving at the snap. And few and camp held on to it. That'll be an illegal procedure against Wichita State as they were not set offensively. And so again, the offense continuing to sputter. It should be noted that they have their finest moments against San Francisco State and Moorhead State. They have not done much against Toledo or Iowa State. Well, when you they're at, they're playing down is what they were doing in those two games. They definitely had the size, the strength, and the speed to open the way they did. Second down. So we'll have second down. Says Daryl McCoy, the referee tonight. Just outside the 25-yard line, second and nine for the Shocks. Utah State has two timeouts left. Will Ron Chismar try to open it up a little bit and get something going before the half expires? Now he puts it on the ground. It's Eric Gilstrap cutting it up at the 30, and he's knocked down there nicely on the play by Tony Hanna, who has shown some good mobility. Not particularly big up front, but they are obviously very quick. They're obviously very quick, and if, just like on that last play, they're doing a lot of stunts up front. So we'll see third and five for the shots. Gil Strap, 5'11", 194 pound freshman out of Dallas, averaging about seven yards a carry. Could catch the football well out of the backfield. Third down facing Ron Chismar's Wichita State Shockers. They're coming on the blitz. And a draw when run properly is supposed to neutralize that play. So it was the proper call, but wrong execution. Troy Wetzel in a host of green shirts in there, along with Richard Harvey, who was stunning off the near side. And so, timeout by Tulane with 106 left. They're going to try to put some more points on the board. It's 7 to nothing. We'll be back to the dome. use ordinary tap water to make their beer. Not coarse. Pure. Natural. Yeah. Coors is the one. Watch out. It's coming. You're about to get hit with another big heating bill. <laughs> I live in fear of high fuel costs. Move up with Dave Lennox to the Pulse Gas Furnace. The Pulse turns almost 100% of the fuel it uses into heat, and that could cut your winter heating bills almost in half. Attaboy, Dave. Start saving money. Give your Lennox dealer a call. He's in the yellow pages. Well, we just missed the punt from David Armagos, but it was uneventful at best as the ball... Took a nice skid off the AstroTurf, and he made a good play like any good shortstop would. Ball bounced down about the 45, and it'll actually roll out at about the 35. So that's where Tulane will start with 57 ticks of the clock left. And Terrence Jones, don't go away. He can put it up quickly. Let's hope we don't have a letdown near the end of this half like we did last week against Iowa State. And he's looking to go up quickly. He's got time across the middle, and Zeno, that time, just flat dropped it. And we've sure had the break so far in this half, there's just no doubt. Well, he didn't look like an All-American on this one, as Jones delivered the ball perfectly. And plenty of time to throw. And there it is, this flat drop. Ronnie Gould on the play defensively. They're going to get the yards short here. The key for Wichita State in the secondary, of course, is not to give up the big hit. Zeno is split right. Back to pass, Jones. Looking for his main man again, and oh my. That was an All-American catch. <laughs> that is definitely an All-American catch. Wow. Mark Zeno, and this is worth a second look. Number Z, as they call him down here. Just watch this, folks. That's how you catch a football, ladies and gentlemen. Five. 
Tulane will tack it over now. They'll have a first down inside the 50 at the 46. It's seven to nothing. Don't miss your last chance to catch 2.9% financing and up to 750 cash back at your Greater Wichita Pontiac dealer. Buy Pontiac Grand Am, Pontiac Fiero, or Pontiac 6000 now and save hundreds with 2.9 financing or up to 750 cash back. Hurry, Pontiac excitement's here, but you'd better move fast. 2.9 and up to 750 cash back ends October 8th. See your Greater Wichita Pontiac dealer today. Schofield Brothers, Prestige, Buxman, Copeland, Barry Erickson, Les Jacobs. Make sure you're thinking pictures all the way through it. This looks fine. Do we have any video of it? Timeouts remaining, Tulane with one. They have 45 seconds to work with, and they're 46 yards away from punching it in. Well, while we were gone, Wichita State called a second timeout because Tulane came out ready to go, and we weren't ready. And unlike uh, a few times, we were smart enough to call a timeout and get organized. Ron Chismar, the expression tells it all. Ron is not only frustrated with the way the game is going right now, he's also frustrated with the fact that I heard he lost his game clothes. And he's wearing a tie and just doesn't feel comfortable doing that. That's very becoming. Looks good. The fashion plate. The Chiz. What a classy guy. He needs a win, though, I'll tell you. He needs a win. First and ten. 45 seconds left. Jones is going up top, and he's got a man on the near side, wide open down the sideline, and knocked away by Eric Gilstrap. Oh, we're going to have to take a second look at that. That looked to be a good defensive play as breaking long was Maurice Nelson. And I'd like to take a second look. And here it comes. Terrence Jones, a straight drop back. There's no doubt about it. We're beat on the play all the way, but a great recovery job. Oh, I can't believe that. My, oh, my. That, that is a very iffy call right there. That's a great recovery and a great job of breaking up the ball. And face masking may indeed be the call. A face mask may be the call instead, rather than pass interference. Let's hope so. Let's check it. First down. That is a very marginal call. And a very important one, as it gives Tulane a first down at the 32-yard line. Actually, a nice recovery here made by Derek Ritchie. There's the ball. There's the hit. That's a bad put. That's a bad call. Jones looking for Zeno across the middle. And it's incomplete. Randall Cooper was right with Zeno on that play. We're down to 34 seconds. We could just keep it from scoring, even take a field goal going into the half. We'll be in good shape, I think. Now, at this point, it would be about a 47 yard offering. As it is, second and 10. Coming this way, man open on the flat, Marvin Allen. And Allen's finally run down out of bounds at the first down at the 21 yard line. 29 seconds now left in the half. They can do a lot of things from this set. They float the pocket quickly. Marvin Allen, who has been a receiving threat for Tulane in this ballgame, he has been effective. And he picks up the... Actually, they're just shy of the first down. They're going to mark it. Second down and inches. And now they're going to measure it. Terrence Jones just looks like he has good control and knows what he's doing on that field at all times. Total confidence, there's no question. Boy, it'd be nice to keep them out of the end zone at this point. You can give up three right now. There you see the measurement. They're going to be just a touch shy. Half a length of a football. 
Tulsa Golden Hurricane. That'll be coming up November 1st. And my, they have been impressive throughout the early part of the season. Three and one on the air. Beat Cal State Fullerton the other night. Beat Houston. Beat Oklahoma State. Yeah, Oklahoma State played, and played very tough against Arkansas. Very tough. In fact, I think they were down with seven nothing at the half. I had the opportunity to see them a couple nights ago on television. And boy, they just look strong. They've really got a good program going down in Tulsa. Don Borden, head man there, of course, in his second year after John Cooper. Stepped up to Arizona State. They're going to hit quarterback in Steve Gage. But right now it's third and inches. They'll run the option coming our way. Sean Jackson makes a nice play to knock Marvin Allen out of bounds. At about the 23, and they'll come up shy. So Sean Jackson with the play. Another good defensive effort on just how you defense that option. Tougher to run that option to the near side, too. They're running from the near hash mark, and they're coming back to the short side of the field. So we will now see a field goal attempt from Danny Curl, and it will be from 40 yards. You see that he certainly has the range. He's been good from 42 this season, 2 of 5 thus far on the year. 24 seconds left in the period. Looking to go up 10 to nothing is Tulane. The kick is up, and it just barely gets there. It is good. So Tulane has gotten back on the board here in the second period of action. And they're up by a score of 10 to nothing thanks to Danny Girl, who just knocked it through from 40 yards out. Well, Bruce, we've got 10 seconds, 19 seconds to go in the first half, and Wichita State should be thankful they're not going in 24 down 24 to nothing at the half. We've had a lot of breaks go our way. No question the Shockers have been the beneficiary of the breaks. And actually, offensively, while they have stuttered a bit and have been able to really sustain any kind of drive. They have nonetheless held their own after a few shaky starts defensively against this delayed club. They have held their own and, and the opportunity there is at least you're keeping the defense off the field. And so Wichita State will receive a kickoff for the second time in the ball game. Curl to kick off. To the near side will be Gilbert is deep to receive, as is Sean Jackson. And the ball is on the ground, taken up by one of the up men. Looks like Joe Miles picked that ball up. And he is knocked down, so Wichita State will start it from their own 43 yard line. 15 seconds left in the period. And indeed, the half, the Shocks look like they'll go to the intermission, trailing by 10. Coming up at halftime, we'll talk to Jumpy Gathers. Remember the name? Now playing with the New Orleans Saints, formerly of Wichita State University. He's getting ready to take on another former Shocker, Anthony Jones, who is now a tight end for the Washington Redskins as they get set to play here in this same dome tomorrow night. 15 seconds left, and I'm of relative confidence that see the ball on the ground and indeed we will David Smith met at the line of scrimmage and knocked back as the first half comes to a close so Wichita State has some readjusting to do as for Tulane it's just a question of cashing in on the opportunity they weren't able to do it twice and as a result lead only 10 to nothing as they go to the locker room it's your last chance to make a real haul at your Greater Wichita GMC truck dealer. Get 2.9% financing or up to $750 cash back. GMC S15 pickup truck, GMC half-ton pickup truck, GMC Jimmy. Sauter Legris and Schofield Brothers have a great selection of GMC trucks. But you better hurry. 2.9 and up to $750 cash back end October 8th. See your Greater Wichita GMC truck dealer today. This is a hamburger, getting hard and dry, because it's cooking on a flame that's too high. At Hardee's, we make our hamburgers at a lower temperature, so they cook up thicker, succulent, full of natural juices. And the flavor doesn't go up in smoke. The new Quarter Pound Burgers from Hardee's, a little closer to home. The coupons are in the mail. 
Get ready to watch the new shows on Channel 12 and record your favorites with this special offer from National Video. Buy three Scotch brand cassettes at regular price and use your coupon to get the fourth absolutely free. You'll find money-saving coupons from Hardee's for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Get the house ready for cold weather with a super fall special from Condition Air and find out how KFDI is going to make you rich. If you didn't get the coupons, go buy your nearest National Video and get your packet today. Poitiers. Kane. Together. The Wilby Conspiracy. An adventure across 900 miles of escape and survival. A treasure hunt that plunges deep into the earth. A tangled web of crosses and double crosses. The Wilby Conspiracy. Saturday's magnificent movie at 10.30 following Eyewitness News Weekend. Well, 10 to nothing, not necessarily indicative of the way this football game has gone. It could easily be 24 to nothing. Wichita State, fortunate to be in this football game at this point, Dick. Very fortunate. A very uneventful first half offensively for the Shockers. What about the second half of action? What, what, what do we need to see from them offensively? They've just got to make a bunch of adjustments. They need to open up their offense. They need to come out throwing the ball more. They need to get away from the delay in the backfield. Now get the ball to the first man in the hole. Let the big horses up front do all the work for them. And you think that we might want to see an airing out, perhaps, of the passing attack. Maybe we'll see uh, Brian float the pocket a little bit, perhaps even David Cruz a little bit later. There's a good possibility we'll see David later on. We've expected, of course, an offensive track meet in this ball game. Thus far, the defenses have really taken the, the show away from the offenses. They have. Uh, the defenses have done a good job. The Shocker defense that, that had a good game last week against Iowa State and just wore down near the end of the game is coming out here again, playing a good game. So, it'll be interesting to see statistically exactly how these two teams match up. Tulane has moved the football, but of course have given up the big play on the turnovers. Wichita State has really been unable to do anything uh, with the ball offensively as David Smith has carried the brunt of the offensive burden. But right now, we're going to send it back to our studios in Wichita where Kerry Addington is standing by live to bring you up to date on the latest college football today. Kerry? All right, thank you very much, Bruce. This afternoon in Lawrence, the Jayhawks turned in perhaps their best overall performance of the year. Mike Orth with four touchdown passes today to beat Southern Illinois 35 to 23. Now, two of those scoring catches were made by former Wichita North product Ronnie Caldwell. This one gave KU a 14-10 lead in the second quarter. The Salukis, however, led 17-14 at halftime on this Pat King pass to a wide open Bobby Sloan. Arnold Snell put Kansas back in front of the opening minutes of the second half, taking a north pass, finding the sideline, and completing a 30-yard play. Early in the fourth, Orth goes to Willie Vaughn as Kansas goes to 3-1, beating Southern Illinois today 35-23. In other big games today around the country, Alabama versus Notre Dame at Legion Field. This is Greg Richardson threading his way for 66 yards on a punt return as the second-ranked tide runs by the Irish 28 to 10. At East Lansing, number 11, Iowa, took a 24-14 lead midway in the final quarter on this Rob Hufflin field goal. But 17th-ranked Michigan State pulled to within three points when Dave Urema found Mark Ingram. The Spartans later had a chance to win it with a minute 25 to play from the Iowa 3, Urema back to pass. But Ken Sims' interception preserves a 24-21 win for the Hawkeyes. A big scare for third-ranked Nebraska at Columbia, South Carolina. Steve Taylor connects with Todd Milliken in the final minutes to put the Huskers ahead by three. South Carolina was moving toward the game winner late when Brian Siebler picked off Todd Ellis. Nebraska escapes 27-24. And in Pasadena, Jeff Von Raphorst and Bruce Hill were a winning combination as number 16 Arizona State beat number 15 UCLA today 16-9. Let's check out some of the scores this afternoon. In the second period, top-ranked Miami leads Northern Illinois, Alabama by 18 over Notre Dame. Nebraska, as we saw, by a hair over South Carolina. Michigan leading the Badgers of Wisconsin in the third. Penn State easy over Rutgers. Oklahoma by 46 today in Norman over Kansas State. Auburn all over West Carolina. Arkansas a winner today over Texas Christian. Number nine, Southern Cal, will host Oregon later. And as we saw, Iowa, a three-point winner over Michigan State. A couple other big eight scores for you. Iowa State coming back to beat Wyoming by 11 later on tonight. Missouri will play at Syracuse. Friends got I Ottawa today by one. And Coffeyville beat Butler County today 27-17. We'll be back with some baseball news right after this.
The Opera Kansas Film Festival features four opera films beginning October 12th at Cinemas East with Bizet's Carmen. Send $15 for each season ticket to Opera Kansas, Box 2814, Wichita 67201. More bad news for the Red Sox today. Boston catcher Rich Gedman suffered a badly bruised shoulder during this afternoon's doubleheader with the Yankees. However, Gedman says nothing will keep him out of the lineup when the league championship series begins next Tuesday night. We'll have all the news, weather, and more sports coming up tonight on Eyewitness Weekend right after the game. Make sure you're thinking pictures all the way through it. Do we have any video of it? Roger Cornish and Susan Peters, a third generation Kansas broadcaster who knows our state. How is he know that they're getting payoffs? Teamed with an energetic, award-winning journalist. When news happens that affects you, you can depend on the senior anchor team in Kansas. The anchor team with the experience you deserve. Roger Cornish and Susan Peters. When everything depends on it. All right, coming to you in three, two, one. Halftime from New Orleans in the Superdome, Wichita State and the Green Wave of Tulane. And we're very glad to have along with us former Shocker defensive lineman and standout Jumpy Gathers, James Gathers, now playing with the New Orleans Saints. And uh, uh, Jumpy, let's talk a little bit about the New Orleans Saints. Uh, off to a good win against Green Bay after an early loss. And uh, you've stumbled a little bit now, but uh, uh, starting to pick up the pieces. You've got a big ball game against the Washington Redskins tomorrow. How do you feel about the club and its progress to this point? Well, I feel right now we're on the ball right now because uh, we got our foot back together. Uh, we had a rough camp, mini camp, and I feel like that take a toll in the first couple of games right now. Everybody learned the system, we adjusted the system, we're ready to play, and we're going to prove it on Sunday. Now, obviously, in New Orleans, not the richest football tradition. Uh, only an 8-8 eight and eight record is the best record uh, in the franchise's history. Uh, but with Jim Finks coming in in an administrative role, Jim Mora now is the new head coach uh, with his success in the United States Football League. Do you get a feeling that uh, things are on the upswing here in New Orleans? I think we're on a positive uh, upswing here. We, just have, we have to move a little slower and people realize what we have to do because NFL, you just can't jump in and, and blow the whole system out because Jim Mora is a winning coach. And uh, I think we're going to turn it around. Now let's talk about some of the adjustments that you had to make from, from college football. Obviously, you're an overpowering player at Wichita State, able to move people out of the way uh, uh, with your strength and getting leverage. Is that the same situation here in the NFL? What is the biggest adjustment you've had to make? Biggest adjustment first is New Orleans. <laughs> <laughs> the humidity and the weather. And after I got that, I, I, I mainly got drafted here for pass rush. And when I got here, they were going to they was use my first year of pass rush. And uh, my second year, they, they used me at playing the run. And I gained about 285, and then I'm going to play the run and pass. So that's the only adjustment I have to make. The, uh, when I was Wichita, I, I used to play all over the field. Here, it's, it's a little easy because I only have to play a little area. Drug testing, of course, has become an extremely controversial element in pro sports now. It's getting an awful lot of publicity. What is the New Orleans Saints' uh, position on drug testing at this point, and how are your, what is your own personal feelings about uh, drug testing in the future, that, uh, whether or not we may or not may see it or may not see it in the National Football League? Well, to me, the, uh, drug testing don't bother me. It's, it's a job, and the guy pays us to uh, work, and uh, 
he set the rule and I follow the rule and I think that's how the, some of the guys feel. And but uh, we got a contract we signed and uh, we had to fulfill our contract and, and that's about it. James Gathers defensive lineman for the New Orleans Saints formerly of Wichita State University a hometown boy making it well in the pro football annals so we thank him for of course stopping by here tonight it's halftime Wichita State and Tulane from the Dome will continue right after this timeout. Make sure you're thinking pictures all the way through it. This looks fine here. Do we have any video of it? QWCH TV is broadcasting it. We count her down from 10 on this first one and leave five in the morning. Wichita, this is Bob Tway, inviting everyone to come out to the Symphony Golf Swing, October 5th at Hidden Lakes Golf Club. There'll be $50,000 in prizes to be given out, with the winner also getting to play around with myself, Bob Tway. So I hope everybody come out and have a real good day. For complete details on how you can be a part of the Symphony Golf Swing on October 5th, call the Symphony office at 267-5259. So that's the story at halftime. 10 to nothing. Tulane leading Wichita State. I want to thank James Gathers for stopping by at the intermission. It's always good to see a homeboy doing well in the NFL. It sure does. He looks good. Anthony Jones, of course, a tight end that played at Wichita State University, is also in town tomorrow as the Saints take on the Redskins, one of the only, I believe, two or three undefeated teams remaining in the National Football League. And, of course, the Saints have a long way to go before they regain respectability, certainly. First half action. Let's take a look now as Tulane really came out of the gun very quickly. Dick, uh, tremendous uh, first two pop, two plays from scrimmage, and Rodney Hunter did most of the damage. Just a big play, right off tackle. 41 yards before Sean Jackson and Randall Cooper wrangle him down in the end zone, but that quickly it was Tulane leading it by seven to nothing, and they were knocking again just about three minutes later. As Terrence Jones tries the right side, dives towards the end zone, and Ronnie Gould, opportunistic positioning. Ball is actually knocked loose right there into the end zone, and it's a touchback. Shockers of Venena able to move the ball on the ground at least uh, consistently, so they did have a little glimmer of hope as Brian McDonald with a quick read finds David Smith, and he has been running hard. But it looks like the Shockers are going to have to open it up a little bit in the second half. The Shockers have to come out and just run and gun. They need to get, you know, this team can score points on you without any problem. Like we said, it should be 24 to nothing right now. Uh, to stay in this ball game, we need to get the ball, we need to score, and we need to score again. That, of course, was Mark Zeno, and this, the field goal just before the half was completed. Set up on that catch from Zeno. Dan Girl knocks it through from 40 yards, and that is how we have gotten to this point. It is a 10 to nothing ball game. Wichita State defensively, I think, have made good adjustments. They're slanting and cutting off uh, the option lanes, and they're doing a nice job getting in and uh, creating havoc with Terrence Jones. Well, they are. They're doing a good job on that. Unfortunately, we're still a little weak right now. They've had receivers open most of the evening. There's been a lot of drop passes in that secondary. And I think that Tulane certainly is probably going to try to exploit what they perceive to be a shocker weakness, a weakness in the secondary in just the second half. You know they'll come out throwing. So it's 10 to nothing. Wichita State on the short end of a stick right now. Tulane and Wichita State getting ready to come back onto the field. We'll have second half, and second half action coming up. If you made hamburger patties the way most places make hamburger patties, you discover your thick, meaty burgers were suddenly dry, flat, and lifeless. So at Hardee's, we developed a way to make our patties gently, so they cook up thicker, full of natural juices. It's a complicated machine, but we can give you an idea of the principle it's based on. The new Quarter Pound Burgers from Hardee's. A little closer to home. Watch out. It's coming. You're about to get hit with another big heating bill. <laughs> I live in fear of high fuel costs. Move up with Dave Lennox to the Pulse Gas Furnace. The Pulse turns almost 100% of the fuel it uses into heat, and that could cut your winter heating bills almost in half. Attaboy, Dave. Start saving money. Give your Lennox dealer a call. He's in the yellow pages. The only 
thing you stand to gain by putting off joining the YMCA is weight. On the other hand, look at all you have to gain by joining. Call your local Y for information. The YMCA. Don't put it off. Join now during the YMCA Centennial Celebration. Membership's good at all three Y locations, east, west, and downtown. Poitier. Kane. Together. The Wilby Conspiracy. An adventure across 900 miles of escape and survival. A treasure hunt that plunges deep into the earth. A tangled web of crosses and double crosses. The Wilby Conspiracy. Saturday's magnificent movie at 10.30 following Eyewitness News Weekend. 10 to nothing, Wichita State trailing as we get ready to open the second half of action. Statistics from the first half, and there it is. Tulane with 10 first downs to the Shockers, three, and that is how ineffective the Shockers have been offensively. You talk about wanting to establish the rushing game and using the size differential up front. Well, they have been unable to do that as well with Nary 47 yards. Tulane countering with 136. A lot of that, of course, off the option in between the guards. 55 of it, indeed, in the first uh, two plays from scrimmage. Terrence Jones has 79 yards through the air. The Shockers have countered with 25. Only 72 yards total offense against a defense in Tulane that was giving up 460 yards a game coming in. So that really does not speak well for Ron Chismar's offensive scheme thus far in this ballgame. No, it doesn't, and you have to ask yourself why, because you can look at all the statistics. You can look man for man. We go right down the line, and we outweigh them. They do have a little bit more speed. The Shockers just seem down right now. They seem down for the last two or three weeks, emotionally and everything else. You know, you go out in the field with them, there's a lot of people just walking around with their heads down, and not an awful lot said. And I know for a fact there's not a lot said in the huddles. Kirk Allen and Brian McDonald, the... Two captains for Wichita State coming out to negotiate possession in this, the second half coming up. David Smith, 15 carries for only 33 yards, so just over two yards a carry. Rushing the football. And he is the only shocker that has carried the ball from the line of scrimmage. McDonald is three for six for 25 yards. Hunter, eight for 79 for Tulane. Jones, six for 31 on the option. Jones is also 7 of 12 for 79 yards. And Ron Chismar, right now with a 10-point deficit, he's got to be pleased with that in that it wasn't any bigger than it is. But certainly not pleased with the way his club has performed offensively, in particular, through this, the first half of action. The stats weren't totally complete. I believe uh, Tony Gilbert did have a few runs in there, and that would account for the difference in the yardage. So just about ready to go in the second half of action. Mac Brown in his second year as the head coach at Tulane. He was one in ten a year ago, thus far one and two on the season, trying to even it up in two and two, just 34 years old. Doubles as the athletic director here at Tulane University. Johnny Girl will, Danny Girl will kick it off. 5'10, 170 pound sophomore out of St. Louis, Missouri. Shocker's taking a little bit of time to get on the field. Tulane goes to Florida State next week. And the Shockers, of course, head to Tallahassee two weeks hence. Next week, it's home against Central Florida. Also coming up, the first varsity alumni baseball game. That'll be 7-15, October 25th, the next stadium. Being sponsored by the Residence Inn. Their sponsorship support has allowed us... To make uh, free tickets available to the game that will feature the return of Joe Carter, who could very well end up leading the American League and runs batted in, and Russ Mormon, Brian Elkers as well. People can get free tickets at Martin Sports in Town West, all Burger King locations, Southwest National Bank out in Town East and Town West, popcorn video locations in Marina Lakes and Central Heights, and at the Wichita State Ticket Office. I'm even going to go out and make an idiot of myself. Oh, you need to. <laughs> Some would argue I do that every time I strap on the headset. <laughs> when we get a little bit more time, we'll go with maybe a little bit more detail. Homecoming is really going to be a lot of fun this year, and it starts off uh, with an early brunch for the 1948 Ro uh, Raisin Bowl team. That's right, and I believe that 22, 23 of the fellows are planning on being back, at least at this point. 
And to date, I think they have confirmation on 23 people. And that'll so that, be that'll most be the most attractive home ball game that the Shockers play this year as well against Cincinnati. So the Shockers down 10 points. 30 minutes of football left, and Dan Gurl will put it into action as we're ready to go now in the second half. Bruce Hurdle along with Dick Klein from New Orleans. Glad you're along with us. And the ball sails towards the sideline, and it'll be a five-yard penalty. And the Shocks now should really have good field position as the ball will be knocked back to the 30-yard line. Kicking from the 35 this year, as in the pros. First year that that has been instituted. Well, you know that was instituted just to... Uh make it a little more wide open with a good run back but unfortunately we're breeding or creating stronger and stronger kickers all the time we have kids right now that you could probably put it back to the 20 and they put it out of the end zone so Dan Girl will get his chance once again if you're just joining us on a Saturday night along the state of Kansas Hope you're having a nice one. Shocks in this ball game trail by a touchdown and a field goal. Tulane came out 55 yards away in the first two plays of the ball game. Knocked it in the end zone. Since then, they have been virtually silenced, although they've had a couple of opportunities gone awry. Smith at the 22, cutting it right. Out past the 37, or the 35 to the 37-yard line. And so Wichita State will start with one of their best field positions of the ball game. How important is this first drive in your estimation here, Dick? What are the Shocks going to be trying to establish? Well, they're going to try to establish, obviously, some scoring offense. We've seen little of that. In fact, none of that in the last uh, 30 minutes. They've really got to take this ball and ram it down their throat right now. Shocks ineffective through three periods at Iowa State last week as well before David Cruz came in through two touchdown passes to Anthony Hardy late. And indeed, they go with the play action. They'll go right up. Man open on the near side. Brock Hewitt just flat dropped the football. Very unusual to see him do that. That's very unusual. Oh, you hate to see that right out of the chute. It just doesn't do a lot to foster confidence as Brian was on the money this time. Brian was on the money. That gives us the first 10-10 at uh, their 45. And we start moving the ball, unfortunately. And like I said, this is something that just doesn't happen with this young man. He has a great set of hands. Might have heard footsteps. Senior out of Heston. Eric Gilstrap and David Smith, the setbacks as they go from the pro set. Brock you into the lower part of your screen. And Smith takes it off the right side. And for good yardage, pounding out for eight yards across the 45-yard line before Troy Wetzel knocked him down. And now we'll have a penalty flag on the play as well. And we may tack on another 15 for a personal foul. Let's wait and see. And that is the indication. Personal foul against Tulane, and so Wichita State will go via the penalty across midfield and into Tulane territory for the first time. And, Bruce, this is exactly what we need. On that last play, the offensive line came out and really did an outstanding job of blocking. David Smith with a good, strong run, picked up nine yards. Dead ball foul. Personal foul, defense, first down. And there's the extracurricular activity you see right there. It's just a little push. Dalvin Ben mixing it up. There's John Pratt. Shift to the eye. Gilstrap the near back. David Smith, the far right hand of your screen. Looking downfield, Anthony Hardy, and the ball is overthrown. And we'll have a penalty flag on the play. And it'll be pass interference. Another very interesting call. Tyrus Allen was on the coverage. And let's take another look, Dick. Anthony is open right away. Just takes a little bit too long to get the ball to him. Good call. Good call. Well, just about the judgment call, certainly. But it appeared to be. Well, those are the kind we need in our favor every so often. It's always easy to easier to pick up a good call when you don't have to worry about objectivity. Pass interference, defense, first down. Fifteen yard penalty in college football now is pass interference. Unlike in the pros where they get the mark at the point of infraction. 
So the Shockers have it inside the 25-yard line. Moving offensively for the first time, aided by two penalties. They've moved 30 yards, as a matter of fact, as a direct result of a personal foul and pass interference. David Smith driving to the 20, inside to the 18. We have a penalty marker down, and that is in the general area of where holding usually takes place. I'm afraid you're right. And the unfortunate thing is that it comes from the left-hand side of the line where the play wasn't even being run. It looked like Scott Hughes on that play. So Ron Chismar looking his grab bag now for a second and 10, 20 play. Here's the call. Holding. Offense. First down. First and 20 for the Shockers. And Ron Chismar. Has relayed the proper information to Brian McDonald. Now can they execute? to the 25 and running hard for a pickup of eight on the play. Bruce, that's an excellent call at that time. Everybody, of course, was thinking pass. And here we come with the draw. So you got to like David Smith. He runs awfully hard. He's a punishing runner from the tailback slot, as we shall see right here. David does have a tendency to run straight up and down, but he's big and strong enough he can get away with it. Nice job with the seal inside from David Panter and Roger Fultz on the play, enabling an eight-yard pickup. From David Smith, now second and 12. Running from the 25-yard line is Wichita State, down 10 to nothing in the ballgame. McDonald looking to throw. Brock Fuelen complete to the 12-yard line, and good for a first down. And that's the Brock we all know. Good hands. Did a great job of getting open. The ball was right where it should be. Just a quick turn. 13-yard pickup on the play. And that's how you like to make it. And another nice job of pass protection. Sets up a first down, and they can pick up yet another at the two-yard line. They're operating from the 12. So Wichita State with their first threat of the evening. Rolling to his right. Flag down, and the ball will be thrown away intelligently by Brian McDonald. But again, I would imagine we'll see a hold against the Wichita State offensive line. That was thrown awfully fast. There were two seconds left on the clock. Offsides. I take it back. Against Tulane. So they'll move it up another five. Bruce, I really think in a situation like this, we do have the people just to push it right at him. You can play the power of football with the folks that Wichita State has up front. We've made mention of it before. Here's the call. Offside, defense, first down. Wichita State, man-to-man, -man, 19 pounds bigger across the offensive line than Tulane is across the defensive line. That advantage did not evidence itself in the first half. Thus far in the second, it's been different. 12.42 remaining in the third from the split backfield. McDonald gives it to Smith, going to the left side, and he's down around the two-yard line. Before he's finally stopped on the play by Rich Souter. And that's the kind of hole you like to see us run through. Nice job sealing by Panther again. Look at that. All sorts of daylight to move. Nice job by Scott Leedy. Scott did a beautiful job. Driving his man off, and that's what you want right down here. You just want to take it right at him and shove it down their throat. hold on to that football. Tulane did not do that in the same situation twice in the first half. David Smith to the goal line. Touchdown! Shocker! So that right side did a nice job. Over there, Roger Fultz and John Pratt. Jack Owens and David Smith gets it in. So Ron Schismar is on the board and the Shockers are down four. Helped by two penalties, capped on this run from David Smith. There's just a, a missed block and a great job of running by David. Look at the seal 
Nicely done up there by John Pratt and Roger Fultz. Scott Leedy coming across off the trap. They actually brought him down the line of scrimmage and moved the linebacker out. And David Smith filled the hole. So Brad Fleeman will try to tack on the extra point. He does. And so Wichita State has sustained their first concerted offensive effort of this ball game and trail by a field goal. Who's gonna be at the Silver Bullet tonight? Silver Bullet. Sipping on a cold court light. Party and ride. 35 wins in a row. The guy never loses. Never does. What's the secret? Who's chili? Who's chili? Yep. He never eats it. Ah. You have any popcorn? There's no slowing down with the Silver Bullet tonight. Coors Light Beer. At Pizza Hut, we make our pan pizza with dough made fresh every day. With pure mozzarella cheese and only the finest toppings. So when you've got to have a hot, delicious pizza, we modestly suggest you treat yourself to one of ours. Pizza Hut Pan Pizza. The complexion of this ball game has changed, and the Shockers find themselves now trailing by three. There was the damage on a 63-yard drive helped out by a personal foul. Well, we showed the ability to come back. Right after the personal foul, we get called for one. Leaves us with first and 20 and come back and punch it in. So Brad Fleeman will send it deep from his own 35. It'll come to the near side and sail out of bounds, and so he'll kick it from the 30. Fleeman makes the conversion on the touchdown and gives him another record, 24 in a row. Now this will be a very key series of plays for Tulane. They need to move the football a little bit. Wichita State certainly has taken that great cliche, the momentum that everyone talks about. They say that it's overrated, but I think in a ball game like this, it's important for Wichita State to get some positive feeling about what they can do offensively, and perhaps that's been generated now. Well, they've proved that. Now it's up to the defense to try to take that away from the opponent. Maurice Nelson deep to receive the kick. As is Marvin Cephas. Brad Fleeman from his own 30. We'll root it this time. 10 to 7, the Shocks trail. They have just put seven points on the board. Short kick. It'll be taken by Maurice Nelson. Nelson at the 20, to the 25, to the 30, and Derek Westfield knocked him down before he reached the 30 yard line. And so that's where Tulane will start. As we have 11.49 left in the third period in this football game, certainly a long way from being over, the complexion is changing. Let's hope the complexion is changing. You know, you always sit here with bated breath knowing how potent this offense is. They can strike at any time. The defense has done a good job on them for the last 20, 25 minutes. Ronnie Gould lining up with Clint Normore, Chris Batts Young, and Randall Cooper in the secondary. They go from motion. First man through is the fullback, Rodney Hunter. Hunter, who had a good first half with 79 yards and including a 39-yard touchdown run. Knocks it up for four yards, and it'll be second and six for Tulane. A little better start this time for the defense than the first half. The man of the moment, Terrence Jones. On second and six. Allen coming to the near side in motion. First man through, and they will go with ball control, and Rodney Hunter, and he knocks it through for a first down. Kirk Allen, Mark Duckins on the stop. And Rodney got three of those yards with both those players on his back. Ten to seven ball game. Tulane leading it in the third period and controlling the football with a first down at their own 40. Allen coming back in motion. Again to the fullback. This time he's knocked down by Chris Holt. Mark Duckins inside. So Rodney Hunter. As Tulane looks to establish some tempo of their own, controlling the ball on the ground. Well, they started out that way, of course, at the beginning of the game, and they're going to try it again. Uh, Mark is down, Mark Duncan. He uh, was limping right after, after the last play, and now again, it could be a Charlie horse or a cramp. 
second down and eight. In a better hurry getting off the field. And Mark Duckins lumbering off the field to the top of your screen. And as he appears to be hollow. Straight drop back. Has a man open, wide open. Zeno makes a move at the 50. He has the first down. Before Jim Storm came from the inside linebacker spot to finally knock him down with some help from Ronnie Gould and Don Weidenkiller. Well, it was a good reception. Unfortunately, he was just wide open, as you'll see. Jones is impressive, and as you said in the first half, totally under control. Zeno makes a nice move to avoid Chris Holt. Holt with a nice recovery before Jim Storm came in to finish him off. Again, it's the fullback, Hunter. And this time, he stopped for no gain. Kirk Allen, Chris Batsyong getting there. Allen clutching his hamstring, trying to stretch it out. Courageous young man playing with a broken, with a broken hand out of Wichita East. Tackling leader on the club a year ago. It's an improving Wichita State defense. It's a definite improving defense, and it's good to see those hometown boys just hanging in there and playing so well. Second down and nine for Tulane. And we had some movement on the offensive line. The football's on the carpet. I believe Tulane came back up with it. And so that'll be a loss of about five for the Green Wave, and it'll bring up a third and 13. So a little miscommunication right there by the center, Ralph Wall and Terrence Jones. And now Mr. Jones, fifth leading total offensive producer in the nation coming into this ball game, is looking at a third and 13 from their passing set. Straight drop back. He has a man open, but it's overthrown as Ronnie Gould made a nice recovery to get in the area of Maurice Nelson and gave him a pretty good lick and so Wichita State's going to get the football back. It's just an encouraging thing to see. It's, again, the receiver is open. It's overthrown a little bit. Time to throw on the play. Ronnie Gould was in the area, but ball was overthrown and Nelson didn't have a chance. So we have the punt. Chris Long in to do it. Fair catch by Anthony Hardy at the 20 and that's where Wichita State will take over is on the play now and so we'll get a reading on that here is Hardy from Laurel Mississippi only 145 pounds but what an offensive threat he is he has not shown that thus far in this ball game as he has not been in the in the receiving scheme thus far they're talking it over here's the call well it's going to back it up They'll run that. Run that back to the 10 yard line is where we'll start. Well, Anthony Hardy hasn't had the opportunity at all in this game to even run the ball back. And too bad for us because he's so exciting to watch. He's a threat anytime he touches the ball. And Chris Scott's got a relatively good job hanging it up. Clipping, receiving team, first down. You hate to see that, especially on a fair catch. Those are the type of miscues that really haunt this man, Ron Chismar. Occasion in Toledo where only nine men were on the field on a fourth down situation, punting situation. They gave up a big first down that enabled Toledo to go ahead and score. A couple of miscues have really hurt the Shockers like that as the season has progressed or digressed, depending on your perspective. All right, now starting from first and ten from their own ten, David Smith, who's borne the brunt of the rushing game for Wichita State, is stopped after no gain. Bruce, they still haven't showed the player the ability to run the play straight up the middle of the first man. They're passing, they're giving the second man through, and it's just giving the defense too much time to set up. Richard Harvey in on the stop. Second and nine, they'll give Smith one yard on the carry. 8-18 and counting down in this, the third period. 10 to 7. Wichita State trailing by three. Smith and Gilstrap are the setbacks. Play action. Rolling this way. He's got all sorts of room. Throws instead. And caught by Anthony Hardy at the 32 off the deflection from Ron Rominger. Anthony Hardy showing why the tip drill comes into play. It usually works for the defense. Brian, it's hard to say who he was actually going for. 
on this pattern as two men were actually in the same area. He had plenty of time to throw the ball. In fact, he could have tucked it if he wanted to and probably gotten the first down. And that's just a fine effort by Anthony Hardy. First down at the 32-yard line. So the Shockers with a big play from the diminutive Hardy. Here's Eric Gilstrap, and he's going nowhere quickly. Ah, that's a heck of an effort to turn it into that. That's a good effort on Eric's part. Yeah. Not the fastest man we have out in the field, but really just puts his head down and goes. Get to the corner pretty well that time. Freshman out of Dallas, Texas. He's got some good years ahead of him. Ran real well last week against Iowa State. And actually picked up two in what should appeared to be a sure loss. Second and eight for the Shocks. Trailing by three. 7.32 remaining in the third. Bruce Hurdle, Dick Klein along the Kansas broadcasting system from the Superdome in New Orleans. Anthony Hardy for the first down as McDonald is on target again. Now we're starting to see the varying of the offensive tempo. Run, run, boom, pass. And it's been effective for Wichita State as they've moved it from their own 10 out just shy of their own 45-yard line now and yet another first down. Ryan did a great job that time of dropping back fast, setting up, and a quick release on the ball. And now we have timeout on the field as there is an injured Tulane player. 10 to 7, Wichita State trailing, but on the move and reason to be optimistic. What is an Acura? It's the sporty Integra, where room and comfort share the road with a Formula One-inspired fuel-injected power plant. It's the luxury legend, whose V6 engine moves it ahead of the luxury cars you thought you wanted to drive. It's the culmination of 15 years of Honda Motor Company expertise in dependability. From 10 to 22,000, it's the affordable new status symbol from Schofield Acura, Kellogg and Greenwich Road. Don't miss the greatest professional wrestling event of all time in Wichita at the Century 2 this Sunday night at 7.30. See a two-ring battle roar for $50,000. See the UWF Heavyweight Championship decided falls count in either ring when Dr. Ness Steve Williams goes against Terry Gordy. In a mixed tag match, the missing Lincoln Dark returning take on John Tedman and Missy Hyatt. See the UWF tag title decided with no disqualification. See Iceman King Parsons. Kids in general mission, just $4. Tickets on sale at Central Ticket Agency, Ulix Music Centers, and yesterday's records. Tickets go on sale at Century 2 Sunday at noon. Bell time for the big one Sunday night at 7.30. 10 to 7, Tulane leading Wichita State. Kevin Tate, the injured member of the Green Wave secondary, being assisted off the field under his own power. He appears to be just shaken up. Wichita State with a first down at their own 44. They took possession at their own 10 after a clipping play on a hole on a punt. And Brian McDonald has taken them this far. Two big catches by Anthony Hardy and a nice run by Eric Gilstrap. Given the Shockers field position. Trailing by three. Smith and Gilstrap from the pro set. Rominger and Hardy are split wide. Gilstrap running across the 45 to about the 47-yard line before he's knocked back on the play. And Chris Marshall. And again, Eric just put his head down and went. You'd just love to see that from the back. Picks up a couple on the play. He's second in the long seven. Six thirty-eight and counting down in the third period of action. Donald Rolls has time. Looking long. Has a man open. Anthony Hardy at the ten. And he's in for the score. So the Shockers come up with the big hit. A 54-yard touchdown pass from Brian McDonald to Anthony Hardy. And Wichita State has come up with the big play to take the lead against the stunned Green Wave defense. Let's take another look. Oh, I told you he was exciting. He just flat gets behind the defense on this play. Brian rolls out, has good protection, sets up, and just lets go with an excellent pass right on the money. You couldn't ask for anything better. You Shocker fans just should be loving this. Anthony Hardy for 54 yards, and all of a sudden the Shockers have opened it up in the second half as we get yet another look from the end zone. 
just had his man beat all the way down the field. Clemens' kick is good, and Wichita State has come out impressively in the second half of action. They lead it by four. Hi, I'm Roger Cornish. Here are a few of the stories that Eyewitness News will be covering for you in the coming week. Governor Carlin comes to Wichita pushing for a change in property classification, which could have a huge impact on the property taxes you pay. City Commissioner and Congressional Candidate Bob Knight talks about an anti-drug program with area high school students. And some other candidates, Tom Docking and Mike Hayden, who want to be your governor, talk to representatives of cities from across the state. So join us for these stories and much more on Eyewitness News this week at noon, 5, 6, and 10. How do you become a Marine? You start by getting in shape, pushing yourself, learning you could do more than you ever thought you could. Once you've made it, you deserve all the pride and respect that comes with being a Marine. If you think the Marine Corps is a good place for you to improve your self-confidence, learn discipline, and get in top physical shape, call your local Marine Corps recruiter at 943-8132. The Marines, we're looking for a few good men. Ball control, if that's been the key, Wichita State has capitalized in the second half. They sure have. The defense has been on the field less than a minute. Fleeman to kick it away as the Shocks have their first lead. Sends it to the near side and picking it up will be Maurice Nelson again. Nelson at the 15 to the 20, avoiding tacklers, outrunning the coverage. He's to the 40-yard line before he's finally knocked down, actually, at the 39. But did a nice job running back against the green, did Maurice Nelson. And he gives Tulane good position to work from their own 39-yard line. And for the first time in the ballgame, as we take a second look, Tulane will start trailing in the contest. Nice run back by the sophomore. Bruce, if he makes the cut back here to the right, I think he only has one man to beat. Unfortunately, he didn't beat that man. Finally knocked down by Sean Jackson. So Terrence Jones from their passing set. Nobody in motion. And indeed, they stay true to that. Straight drop back, has time. Looks across the middle. And there's the man again, Maurice Nelson. He of kickoff return fame moments ago. And the play's good for 16, 17 yards and a first down. He did a great job of hanging on to that ball after he caught it. He was really hit hard that time. Very, very important defensive series for Wichita State. And this is simply too much room. Clint Normore comes up and gives them a lick, but not before they pick up a first down. And Wichita State has taken time out on the field right now. Clint Normore is down and appears to be injured. He's been hampered pretty much through the week. Clint has. But he's just had those hurts time after time. Nothing major, fortunately. But he can get just banged up constantly. Dick and I will next take our traveling circus down Tulsa Way as the Golden Hurricane will fashion the next television opponent. That's November 1st at 2 o'clock. And I hope that you'll join us for that. This is any indication on what to expect for Wichita State on television. I think you'll probably be pleasantly surprised and at least entertained. Six plays, 80 yards. They actually went 90 after the penalty. Took them two minutes and 23 seconds. 53-yard pass to complete it. You know, with the reception, and it's good for 14 yards as Tulane is moving it in big chunks. This is the type of ball game we expected all along. All the way. This is what we wanted to see. Wichita State unable to really put any pressure on Jones. He's getting the time he needs. He does a great job of faking out Weedon Killer on that, and you know, that's not necessarily Kurt's fault. He's just playing that position for the second time this year. Mark Sino. Marvin Allen coming in motion. Fullback, first man through. Rodney Hunter wrestled down on the play by Jim Storm and Kirk Allen. Picks up three yards on the play. First, it's amazing. They are staying 100% to form. If a man coming in motion, we know exactly what they're going to do. Oh, they're a perfect read. They really are a very easy football team to read. And you'd think that Matt Brown might make those adjustments and perhaps mix the Shocker defense up. Going to the man deep in the end zone, Zeno, and it's just over his reach. Ronnie Gould was there, and there was some bumping. And a close call for Ronnie. Unfortunately, it went uh, our way. Inside the 10-yard line, Gould was on him. But as you shall see, Zeno had room, and he is acrobatic. He can make this catch. 
Oh, he didn't miss it by much as Jones was just about on target. So we'll see a third down and seven for Tulane. Shocks need to gut up right here. Back to pass. This time he's rushed. Breaking the pocket. He's got room. He's going to go for six. That's a touchdown. That's too bad because the Shockers really had to play well defense. But that's the type of weapon that Terrence Jones is. He is able to skirt the pocket. That time he cut it up for a big 27-yard touchdown run. It is a game that's a matter of inches. We had the blitz coming from the backside and just missed him by a matter of inches. So Wichita State's defense unable to answer the call after the offense had come up with two big hits. Terrence Jones rambles 26 for the touchdown as Ronnie Gould was just not able to catch up with him and Terrence Jones is showing why he is such a vital offensive force. Oh, he looks good out there, doesn't he? Girl will add the extra point, and so we are starting to see the track meet that we expected as all of a sudden we've seen 21 points on the board and just over 10 minutes of action. So the seesaw swung back the way of the south and Tulane from New Orleans leads the Shockers of Wichita 17 to 14. I always thought that time was a measure of quality. Now they've got technology that can cut the time of aging beer to that. Bam! Instant beer. Not Coors. Coors ages their beer longer than any other major brewer. Almost twice as long. To age any beer longer, it gets smoother. More easy drinking. More like Coors. Nope. Coors won't take shortcuts with time. Ah. Coors is the one. Hi, I'm Gene Rump. Do you know how big your grocery savings are at Skaggs Alpha Beta? Well, let me show you the difference. The exact same groceries that cost as much as $228 at other stores cost only $203 at Skaggs Alpha Beta. That's a $25 savings, and it's been proven by Wichita's own accounting firm of KMG Maine Herdman. So why shop around when the lowest food prices around are right here at Skaggs Alpha Beta? And just back to action as Tulane rooted it deep. And we'll take a look at it again on tape. Tony Gilbert knocked it out to about the 27-yard line. To look at the rangy young man making a nice move back before he's finally stopped on the play by Lonnie Marks. And so Wichita State will start offensively from the 26-yard line. Five plays, 61 yards. It took him a minute 28. That's how quickly. Each play a big hit. Terrence Jones avoiding the blitz and scampering 26 for the touchdown and the go-ahead at 17-14. And the Shockers answer back. Walmeyer along with David Smith. Smith on the right side. He's knocked down quickly by Chris Marshall and Vince Mulmore on the stop. Once again, Bruce, the second man through. Picked up two on the play, and it's second down and eight. Opening up a little bit is Mac Brown. Looking for only his third win in his second year as head coach. Matt Tulane also spent some time at LSU. Oklahoma is offensive coordinator. From the eye formation this time, play action. McDonald with time, has a man open, ball tapped up, and it's kicked off. Coming down with the ball is Cookie Span, and he's got room to roam on the left side. To the 20, and he's knocked out of bounds. What started out like an excellent play for the Shockers, unfortunately, with a tip, just turns into a disastrous play. Now, just as quickly as Wichita State turned the tide on the wave, the wave has regained it. McDonald with time, had a receiver, but just an excellent effort by the man inside. That is Vince Mulmore. He tipped it. Otherwise, it looked to be a long Wichita State gain. Instead, coming down with the interception was Tookie Span, and he rambled it back to the 20, where Terrence Jones sets his offense, looking to plug it up by 9 or 10 now. 
And they'll have timeout on the field by Wichita State, who is not organized defensively, and they'll talk it over. My, how quickly things change. They do. Fortunately for the Wichita defense, they saw something wasn't right and called the timeout. Nope. And you'll just see a fine effort by the linebacker, Mulmore, on this play. Actually fully extended over the carpet, tips it up in the air, and Tookie comes down with it. And I'll tell you, these folks in green got out and knocked some folks around. He ended up with a great return as he took it back about 24, 25 yards. Jocks go home next week for Central Florida. That's a 1 o'clock kickoff, and it's on the road to Florida State. Cincinnati, that's homecoming on the 25th. Remember the varsity alumni baseball game was the night of the 25th at X Stadium. Joe Carter, Russ Mormon, Brian Elkers back in town. It's also on November 1st. That's a television game at home against Illinois State and Arizona State on the road in Tempe. That will also be a television game. Also coming up in Wichita, October 22nd. Henry Levin Arena will be hosting the United States National Men's Volleyball Team, which is currently in the process of playing in the World Championships in Europe. We'll give you more information on that in a moment. First down and 10. Send the man in motion. They bring the option this way. Jones pitches the ball. It's kicked around and finally knocked out of bounds at the 16-yard line as Marvin Allen did not come up with the handle and they end up with the four yard gain anyway that they do and it's a late pitch if it's not a late pitch we have the play just down pat Clint Norbord did a nice job Chris Bats Young almost picked it off in midair now we have an injured player Ronnie Gould we will take a look at it again nice job by Clint Norbord but what presence of mind by Terrence Jones to get the ball off Maybe so much so that Marvin Allen was surprised that he was able to do it. There's Ronnie Gould, and he looks like he's holding that hamstring or knee up. He has had hamstring problems that have kept him out of the lineup through the first three weeks of the season. Just made his first return to action at Iowa State last week, and he appears to be in bad shape as he has taken off the field, and that is an area that they can ill afford any type of injuries because they don't have tremendous depth in the secondary as it is. No, and looking at that close-up on him, he's definitely in a lot of pain. So a bit of ill fortune for Wichita State, both from the standpoint of the injury and the fact that the fumble ended up gaining them four yards, did it for Tulane, and instead of a second and about 14, it's second and six. Allen in motion, they'll give it to the fullback. Cutting it up for good yardage is Rodney Hunter once again. He finally wrestled down at the 12-yard line by Kirk Allen on the play, but he just shy of a first down. It'll be third and two. A big series right here for the defense. They definitely need to keep them out of the end zone except for a possible field goal. Oh, you'd really like to only be able to give up three right here. Three puts us down by six, and we're in the ballgame all the way. Of course, we're still in this ballgame. It's still early. 316 remaining in the third. Here's a third down play for Terrence Jones. Sends the man in motion. That's Allen. Gives it to the fullback, and he stops shy of the first down. Good penetration by the defensive front led by Tony Manning. And that's a fourth down also on the play for Wichita State with Sam Boxley, who's in there. Chris Batsion stuck his head in as well. And Mac Brown's going to go for three. And you can hear the armchair quarterback yelling, go, go, go. This is a smart play. There's plenty of time left to go. Three points is what they need right here. So barring a fake, Wichita State, there's a good look at Tony Manning, 6'1", 245 sophomore out of Richardson, Texas. Came up with the big defensive play. And so it'll be Danny Girl. It was successful just before the half. The kick is up, and the kick is good. So Tulane has put up 10 points the last two times they've touched the ball, but Wichita State comes away with a little bit of a period victory right there. They bend it, but they did not break. Bend it? <laughs> I'll check the grammar, and we'll be back. 20 to 14. All of my students deserve a shot at college, but about half of them can't afford it. That's the bad news. The good news is they can serve part-time in the Army National Guard. They can serve right here in their own hometown, and they can earn up to $18,000 for college. Now, to me, that sounds like an offer that is too good to turn down. 
an irresistible offer from an irresistible force. In the National Guard. So Wichita State only a touchdown and extra point out of this. They had the lead at 14 to 10. Tulane has come back to score 10 unanswered points. We're still in the third period. 227 remaining. There's your deep men. This one will go to Tony Gilbert, and he'll receive it at about the 10-yard line. Across the 15 to the 20. Has room along the right-hand side. It's finally stopped with forward progress to the 26-yard line. So the shocks will start from there. In that volleyball exhibition, the United States against the Japanese national team, international volleyball exhibition. The game being held as a fundraiser for the volleyball program at Wichita State and Friends University. Match will start at 7.35, Henry Levin Arena. Tickets cost $6 for individuals or $5 for people in groups. They're available at Champs in Town East, Martin Sports in Town West, Goldsmiths, and all Wichita State Bank locations, as well as the Wichita State Ticket Office. October 22nd, mark your calendar. International Volleyball comes to Wichita. First and 10 from the 21. That check at the 26. Second man through is David Smith. This time with Roman to run. He's into the secondary. Breaks to the 40s, to the 45. Stumbling to the 50, into the 48-yard line. To the left-hand side, anchored by Scott Leedy. Knocked some folks out of there, as you shall see right here. Look at that nice seal right there. Actually, that's... Nice job done by the Shocker offensive line in there. Kevin Robbins really with the nice seal, and David Smith rambles it with him. He's got room to run. And if he can keep his feet, he can probably break it. It's just a great job by David. So a big pop for Wichita State, and they're at the 49. McDonald calling the signals on first down. Smith again from the eye. Falling across the 45 to the 42-yard line. The market actually at the 43. Still good pickup for Wichita State. The offensive line has done an excellent job this whole second half. Offense lethargic throughout the first half, but maybe there was method to their madness as we take a look. 24,481 tonight in attendance. They looked at the defensive tendencies, perhaps, of Tulane and made their judgments as long as they could keep the score close for what they do in the second half. Thus far, it's been paying off. Credit to the offense. Wallmeyer and Smith split the backfield. Stan Wallmeyer this time, and he breaks across the 40 to the 38 behind the strong block blocking up front from Roger Fultz and John Pratt. The offensive line starting to wear down that Tulane front. That's where the weight factor really comes in. As long as these kids are in the kind of shape that they are, they can go one-on-one -on -one against these defensive linemen any day of the week. Another first down for the Shockers, who are moving it down the field. Had the big run by David Smith moments ago. Stan Walmeyer follows suit. Moving from the 38. Wichita State is start. They're to start feeling like they can pretty much do what they want offensively. They've been able to do it here in the second half. Just past the outstretched hands of Anthony Hardy looking for the, the quick shot there. It would have been good for only a two or three yard gain at the most anyway. Well, you can see the defense just does a great job of reading this play. Chris Allen on the coverage. There's Anthony Hardy. He's had a couple big catches in the second half. One very athletic grab off the deflection of Ron Rominger, which ended up leading to his long touchdown pass. And reception. Second and ten from the 38. Quick draw. David Smith running right side. It looks like it's going to be holding against Wichita State as the flag went down quickly. And that will negate what appears to be an eight-yard gain. And that's a good play to, to run against that defense. If you'll notice, that time, the minute the quarterback took one step backwards, the linebackers were dropping off the ball. Let's see if we can pick up exactly where it was. Looks like Scott Leedy took his man down on a tackle inside. Number 77 out of Harrington, Kansas. 6'5", 251, a senior. It'll cost him some real estate. As the shocks will move it back five and start from the 43. Holding offense, second down. 
I hate to see that call on Scott. He's just one of the better linemen we have out there. A really good ball player. Holding has hurt the shocks on a couple of occasions in this ball game. They were able to negate it with the long touchdown pass to Anthony Hardy. But now it sets up a second and 15. From the 43, Wichita State in the third period, 35 seconds of which remain. Now they're going to knock it back another five. Should have been a 10-yard penalty in the first place, and the official actually had the wrong mark. Holy 10-yard penalty, offense, second down. Yeah, we don't hold it against them. No, it's good to see everybody makes mistakes once in a while. Yeah, you like to see them make mistakes when you're pulling for the white. 32 seconds left in the third period. Shackers trailing by six. Very representative here in the second half. Held their own and were opportunistic in the first. Nice grab on the far side by Brock Fuen. And that gets it back to about the original line of scrimmage. A pickup of about 10 yards on the play. It'll bring us a third down play as we get another look. At least you like to see this. We change our attitude about going after the bomb automatically. We're just going to get that ball, that first down, back a little bit at a time. Offensive line to the man has done a nice job in pass protection tonight. Brian has not been hurried, save for only a couple of occasions. Third and ten, big play for Wichita State. Straight drop back, McDonald with time, looking downfield. Now he's going to run it, and he's not going far. Vince Walmore came in and absolutely submerged it. Well, it was a great job from the defensive secondary on that play. Our offensive line did a supreme job of holding these people out. But you can only hold them out so long. Well, we're going to leave you for some reason on the punt. <laughs> we'll be back 20 to 14. Watch out. It's coming. You're about to get hit with another big heating bill. <laughs> I live in fear of high fuel costs. Move up with Dave Lennox to the Pulse Gas Furnace. The Pulse turns almost 100% of the fuel it uses into heat, and that could cut your winter heating bills almost in half. Attaboy, Dave. Start saving money. Give your Lennox dealer a call. He's in the yellow pages. Sports have their rewards. There are also injuries. Not every team or school or weekend athlete has what it takes to rehabilitate the injury. Now they can turn to Halstead Hospital and the Hertzler Clinic. Their new sports medicine complex puts injured athletes back on their feet quickly, but safely. Supervised by registered physical therapists and an orthopedic surgeon, the sports medicine program combines medical advances with the personal concern of the horse and buggy doctor. Halstead Hospital and the Hertzler Clinic. Big enough to care for you. Small enough to care about you. Unfortunately, the clock ran out on us last time. And now we'll get the punch open the fourth period. Dave Armagas will root it away. Maurice Nelson again deep to receive. Hangs this one up high. And Nelson will let it bounce at the five-yard line. And it goes into the end zone. So it'll be a touchback, and Tulane will start it at their own 20-yard line. Tulane leading 10 zip at the intermission. The shots came out. Bingo, bango. 14 points on the board. The big play. Long touchdown pass from Brian McDonald to Anthony Hardy, 54 yards. Jocks had the lead at 14 to 10. Tulane came right back and in five plays went 65 yards on five big gainers. Capped off by this man, Terrence Jones, taking it in from 26 yards. A field goal has made it 20 to 14, and Tulane starts the fourth period from their own 20. Zeno at the 25, and he's wrestled down there by Randall Cooper. Pick up a five on the play. It's a good job by Randall. Zeno's had a good night. Made a truly impressive catch parallel to the ground in the first half. And he's very dangerous, especially when he catches the football. Shown his mobility. When you can hold Zeno to five yards, it seems like you've done just a fabulous job. There he is, the junior, out of suburban New Orleans, 196 pounds. He split to the bottom left as they go in motion. First man through, that's the fullback. Plenty of running room, and he dives forward for the first down to the 35-yard line. Good job 
of running by Hunter. Nice job in the blocking boy. Look at that nice wall just being laid off there. John Reichel, Ralph Wall, Andre Lockley on that left-hand side of the line. Shocker coaches said they were most concerned about the trap. We've yet to see that play for Tulane. Near side picked up by Marvin Allen, but Randall Cooper and others right there on the play for Wichita State. Also getting over there, Mitchell Morris is in the ball game. He's been slowed by an ankle injury as big 91. He's a fifth-year player for Wichita State. Rashawn Jackson read that very well and, and basically stopped the play for no more yards than it was. Second and five for Tulane. 318 and ticking in the fourth period. Wichita State trailing by six. Jones looking to air it out. And we're going to pass interference. That's a good call against Derek Ritchie. Oh, it's a good call, Bruce, but I don't know. I think the ball was overthrown. Man. Derek was beaten on the play. Ball was certainly overthrown. And you've got to ask whether or not he had a legitimate chance to catch the football because therein lies the ruling. Jones airing it out. That's a tough toss on the run. You've got to think that he would have had a chance to catch the football. So Richie is. Gets the laundry thrown on him. Derek pressed into action, of course, because of the injury to Ronnie Gould, who went out with what appeared to be a hamstring. The last interference, defense, first down. When Wichita State goes to their man-for-man -man defense, we've struggled all year in, in getting beat flat, you know, just frankly getting beat, and that defensive back seems to be running away from the play all the time. He just doesn't see the ball coming. So a first down after the 15-yard penalty at the 45 of Wichita State. Well, he's got a man wide open in the flat. Doesn't see him, and he's going down. That's a good sack, and that's our first of the night, if I'm not mistaken. Tony Manning with the play. But I'll tell you one thing. Rodney Hunter, who's ambling back off the top of your screen right here, he flared out into the flat. You see him right there starting to release. If Jones had looked that way, Rodney Hunter would have had room to ramble. But he didn't even check him off. Good job by the Shocker secondary, and Tony Manning, Manning finishes him off. Big Haas up front, isn't he? Yes, he is. I'm glad I retired. I don't know about you. <laughs> On the option, Jones has an avenue. He's there to the 50, to the 45. And he's knocked out of bounds hard by Randall Cooper. Kind of lottie dot over there by the sideline and really didn't put his head down in and take a tough hit. Randall Cooper made him pay for it. That. Let's look at the linebacker this time and see what happens. Well, he gets knocked down. Yeah, they did a nice job taking the play away. Watch Randall Cooper come up, and he hit him hard right there. Picked up 10 on the play, but still shy of the first down. It's a third and seven facing the Wichita State defense. Shocks need to hold right here and get the football back. And they do. Good pressure being applied up front by Sam Boxley, who's played well in a secondary role for Wichita State. So they come up with the play defensively, and as Marvin Allen is unable to come up with it, and again, we'll see Chris Scott and the Anthony Hardy show. Jocks need a nice return right here if they can get one. Nice line drive punt. And instead, he angles it. Taking it at the 10 and is pounded right there. So Wichita State will have 90 yards to go as making the play, and a big one it was, was Vince Mulmore. You have to ask yourself at this point in the game, and this is a beautiful hit coming up here, but you do have to ask yourself, is Tulane saving maybe some changes for Florida State? They have been 100% true on their reads. They can't go to Florida State and play the same way. Loss last week against Mississippi did this Green Wave Club 35 to 10 after leading 10 to nothing in the first half of action. Also had 340 some yards rushed against them by a young fellow from Texas Christian, Mr. Jeffrey, has rolled it up, and they beat Vanderbilt 
And of course his brother Watson Brown. Mac Brown's brother that is. David Smith on the left side and he's good for nine yards to about the 20 yard line. David Smith has run well with the football tonight. He has made the most of this his first starting assignment for Wichita State. He'll probably be the glamour back however next year when Velasco Smith moves on. As Velasco is a senior. He has run extremely well and fortunately maybe my prediction has come true. The interior line has I think convinced themselves they can handle this defensive line. Second and one. Once you get that in your head it's an easy ball game for you. Good time to air it up and they're going to do it looking long and Anthony Hardy is there and it just was knocked away at the last moment. Nice defensive play. As covering. And that play is just as close as the play we had called against us in the first half. Eric Thomas made a good defensive play right here. He had an interception earlier. Anthony just couldn't quite hold on as Thomas came up to give him a lick. But good call by Ron Chusbar and the Wichita State staff as with second and short, they tried to go for the big play. And that you like to see. And however, does not change the complexion as Wichita State still needs to pick up half a step for the first down. David Smith across the 20 to the 25. Good hard running by David Smith. The man is punishing. He takes a hit at the line of scrimmage and he continues to roll forward. And fortunately, these games are only 60 minutes long. He only had 33 yards rushing at the intermission, but while we don't have any updated statistics through the third, I would wager that he is nearing the 90 to 100 yard mark. I would imagine David's a little slow getting out of bed on a Sunday morning. He'll be sore. 10.54 and counting down. The shots continuing to trail by a touchdown and extra points. Smith again on the left side. This time has room across the 30 to the 40. Runs over a man to the 45 and the 46 yard line. He showed his stuff right there just pounding his way strongly and with speed and determination to the 46 yard line. This is what you love to see. Watch this cutback right against the grain. He breaks for about 15 puts the head down and just said come get me and I love to see that in a football player. Thurston Harrison will think twice <laughs> about taking on David Smith again. Watch this. He's the man that has the unfortunate meeting with him at about the 40 and Smith just went right through him and ran to the 45. So Wichita State moving again with the first down still in their own territory. This time it's Eric Gilstrap cutting it up. And he's down shy of the 50 yard line to about the 48. The freshman out of Dallas. Two Dallas based running backs in the backfield for Wichita State. Eric only gains a couple yards on that play, but he does an extremely good job of watching his pulling guard. 10 11. 10 11 in the ball game and counting down. Wichita State trailing 20 to 14. They were down 10 to nothing at the half. But we may be witnessing a little bit of a coming of age of a football team here. They certainly are playing with much more confidence offensively, defensively. They have continued to improve in this ball game tonight. Still have a tendency to give up the big play. Here's David Smith again. Across the 50 to the 45. Runs over another man just shy of the 40-yard line. And again, it's Thurston Harrison making the play. And Smith right now is hurt. Looks Here's like a leg cramp. Yeah, it sure does. Now, I talked earlier about the lethargic attitude that the Shocks had prior to this game. Uh, and the first half really went that way. These people, these kids have nothing, nothing at all to be ashamed of the way they play ball the second half. David Smith with a nice cut. Finds the open avenue. And just puts his head down. And Thurston Harrison. Knocks him down at the 41. And Smith is still being administered to on the near sideline. That's what it is, all right. It's a leg cramp. He's got an awful lot of muscle to administer. Doug Vandersee, the Wichita State trainer, out taking a look. Matt Smith. Tony Gilbert will thus come into the football game. And Gilbert's tendency, although he is a very good runner, he has a tendency to carry that ball out loose a little bit. And that has been a concern of Ron Chismar. He fumbled, of course, in the Iowa State football game. And he has a tendency to carry that ball out one-handed. There in May lie part of the trepidation in giving Gilbert the start tonight. I'm sure you're right on that. David's up and uh, walking. Oh, in good shape. Well, a little trip right there. But he's going back to the sideline. I think we'll get him to sit down for a while. 
and he'll be back in the game the next series of downs or sooner. So Brian McDonald now working with a new tailback. Tony Gilbert, there's 9.40 remaining, and the Shockers are on the move, looking for the touchdown and the extra point to take the lead. They need seven. First down from the 41. Quick inside to Gilstrap, breaking it to the 30. He goes to the 25. He can get to the corner. Harrison, the only one to stop him, but it's the freshman, Eric Gilstrap, driving inside the 10. And just to the a seven yard line. Beautiful, beautiful run by Eric. He did the most of that on his own. He got the blocks of the line of scrimmage, broke through that, and just took off. There's two good blocks, another good block. A missed tackle right there, and just watch this move. It's so much fun to watch a move like that. Tony Gilbert with the good block actually sprung him around the corner and Gilstrap showing good speed. Watch Tony Gilbert kick the man out right in front of Gilstrap. There you see it. And from there on, it was Eric's speed and agility getting him to the corner and driving it inside the 10-yard line with a shot set first and goal. Looks like a little misdirection and actually miscommunication right there as Brian was fortunate to get the inside handoff back to Gilstrap, and he actually made some yardage of it to the five-yard line. He did. I guess this is the old Mo changing again. When things are going your way, they're just going your way. Incidentally, David Smith, who went out with that, looked to be just a leg cramp well over 100 yards, now had 94 at the end of the third period. So I would imagine he's somewhere in the area of 130, 135 yards. So his performance has been impressive. Then the shots knock it in. It's second down. There's Smith a touchdown. again. Touchdown! And the Shockers have tied it up. Eight minutes and ten seconds remaining in the ball game, and Wichita State, with David Smith carrying the brunt, has plugged it in to you, tie the football game. You just got to believe this offensive team got together at the halftime and said, "Listen, folks, we can move this ball. We can score. We're not that bad a team." And they have just looked super. David Smith with the touchdown and Brad Fleeman now the man of the moment off the hold of David Armagas will try to knock it through and put the Shockers in front for the second time this evening. Kick is up and the Shockers have the lead and what an effort this offense and defense are putting together. We said earlier this week it would take two concerted efforts from the offensive and defensive football teams this far in the second half. That's holding the form. Shocks are up by one. For your taste buds, Mr. Steak, three classic locations here in Wichita. You depend on television news to bring you concise, accurate, up-to-the-minute information. Time and again, you've told us our news is where you turn first when a story is breaking. At CBS News, we have news teams that keep you on top of the world. And in Wichita, you can depend on eyewitness news to keep you informed. We're committed to bringing you more news more accurately and getting you the information first. It's a team effort, and the eyewitness news team is dedicated to being your team. When important stories break, when the news affects the way you work and live, when everything depends on it, you can depend on eyewitness news. There it is, 21 to 20. No misprint there. Fleeman's kickoff again sails out of bounds. And Brad has been true to form in nailing, what, 25 straight extra points, 26 extra points, I guess, in a row. But he has not been effective tonight on his kickoffs as far as keeping them in play. Scoring drive for Wichita State, nine plays, 89 yards, and David Smith took it in as well he should have. He was the man that made that drive go. That and the offensive line up front making the holes in the avenue for him to square through. Incidentally, he has 28 carries now for 142 yards rushing. So David Smith with a very impressive debut as a starter tonight. Two touchdowns as well. You would have thought that the average ball team might have a tendency to get down, losing somebody as important as Velasco to our offense. But boy, David sure picked up the slack, hasn't he? Well, he has lived up to his billing. Wichita State's coaching staff said this kid could really be something. 
Fleeman this time with a good route. Sends Nelson back to the five. He's to the 20 and is knocked down at the 23-yard line. Breaking through and making the play for Wichita State. Number 73, Kevin Robbins. So the offensive tackle doubling on the special teams. And Tulane with eight minutes and five seconds left in a one-point deficit. Have 77 yards to go. And believe me, they can do it. This could be Air Jones time right now. Certainly with plenty of time for a sustained drive, but you may well be right. Terrence Jones brings his club set. Going from the single back slot right. And true to form, without the motion, they'll put it up with time. Across the middle, Zeno makes the play, and he breaks free. Zeno at the 50, to the 40, to the 35, before Sean Jackson finally runs him out of bounds. No flags on the play. And again, the Wichita State defense, who has played a good football game, however... True to form all season long, they have given up the big play when it really hurts the most. Bruce, there's a case where we'll give them the 20 yards, maybe right there, a good hit by Clint, and just breaks off and goes. 43 yards for Mark Zeno before Sean Jackson finally runs him out of bounds, and boom, all of a sudden, Tulane is in business. From the Shocker, 34. The throwing set again, and he will put it up. Short pass completed to Marvin Allen. Pick up of about seven on the play. It'll bring up a second and three. That play has been effective for Tulane throughout the night. Well, with a, quarter like, a quarterback like we have out in the field right now, it's no wonder. He can probably do anything he wants once he starts running that ball. You know, if you're a defensive lineman or linebacker, you've just got to panic when he starts rolling out like that. So Tulane with the big play threatening in Wichita State territory. Second down, actually a long three, call it four. Fullback stopped on the play by the both interior linebackers. There's Rodney Hunter, Kirk Allen, Jim Storm on the stop. And there's plenty of time to go, and you hate to talk about ifs and buts. But boy, a turnover right here would sure be great for the Shockers. What's the saying? If they were candy and nuts, and every be day would Christmas. be Christmas. You got it. And we could use a little Christmas right now. 6.50 remaining in the ball game. Third down and three. Big play for Wichita State and certainly for Tulane. In motion. They're going to option the right side. Jones with the pitch. Nice cut back and just shy of the first down, and depending on the mark, was Marvin Allen. An unfortunate turn for Wichita State, who had the play red and had him pinned. Had him red, had him pinned. A great cutback. Fortunately, the inside pursuit was there. Well, Mac Brown is going to take a timeout and think about it. They are certainly within the range of Danny Girl, who has already been successful from 40 yards tonight. Well, I guess we can all be armchair quarterbacks. With a 6-17 left to go, maybe a half a foot, I don't see him kicking the ball at all. Wichita State, however, has come up with the big play on fourth down previously in this ballgame. As a matter of fact, twice previously. Tulsa, next up, November 1st. That's 2 o'clock kickoff from Skelly Stadium. And yours truly, Bruce Hurdle, along with Dick Klein, will be there. Along with all of you, along the Kansas Broadcasting System. That's our readout tonight from the Superdome. 24, 25,000 people watching on as Tulane has their hands full with a very fired up and spirited group of Wichita State Shockers. A group that has really matured as this game has gone on. In the first half, it could have very easily have been a blowout. Wichita State came up with two key turnovers at their own goal line to keep Tulane out of the end zone. And really, that started to turn it around from a standpoint of momentum. And Wichita State has played tit for tat with Tulane from that point on. And actually have pulled ahead now to lead it 21 to 20. Fourth and inches for Wichita State. And let's hope they don't do the razzle-dazzle right here. Shots on defense. Tulane comes set just inside the 25-yard line. Oh. Ah, he didn't get great it. The shots hold, and what a great defensive play. Clint Normore in there, along with Mark Duckins, and the Shockers celebrate accordingly. Sam Boxley was in there as well. And Wichita stayed with another great play defensively. Terry Green was in there, that of Wapasso, Florida, 226, and the Shockers, for the third time in this ballgame, have held on fourth down. 
Just an outstanding effort right here. Clint's all over the ball. Just great. You know, you talk about the old mental toughness. Boy, these kids have got it this second half. Terry Green with the big play along with Clint Normore. Now it's a question of ball control for Wichita State. Six minutes, ten seconds remaining. They have a one-point lead and the football just outside their own 25-yard line. David Smith, surprise, across the 25 to the 27-yard line. Pickup of two. Make it one. He's now carried it 29 times for 143 yards. He has been the workhorse tonight. Very important for Wichita State to control the football, pick up a first down or two. We need a good control drive, like you said. Tulane's defense has played a lot of football in the second half of action. They must be tired by this point. Wichita State with the adrenaline, trying to punch it out. Second and nine. Donald rolling, and he's going to take a shot. That is nothing to ignite a defense more than that. Good job on the interior line by number 69. Galvin Ben. Todd Wetzel was there as well. That'll set up about a third and 20 for Wichita State. Brian had the time initially, but then things really evaporated quickly and boom there's the hit by Dalvin Ben 6'1 249 out of New Orleans 451 left not too many plays that I'm aware of on third and 20 that are a sure thing and they run the draw David Smith cutting up across the 25 to the 30 so he picks up about 13 of the yards they'll be seven shy and so here it is gut check time at 432 Armagas will have to kick it away first and Tulane's going to have one more chance. Again, David Wait. Smith picking up the yard. I hate to see Brian get nailed for the loss on the second to last play, but at least he did a smart thing and tucked the ball down and took the loss rather than throwing it away. We don't need the big interception right here. Fourth down, Armagos needs to get away a boomer. They're coming with 10 men. Now they peel one off. Gets the kickoff. Line drive, and we'll have a return on it. Barton with it at the 21. To the out to the 30 and the 35-yard line. Actually received it at the 31, so about a four-yard return before Chris Holt got over to make the play. And so there it is. Counting down with 3.56 remaining in the ball game. The situation simple. Tulane trails by one. A field goal will win it at this point. Credit Wichita State in being in this situation. Remember, Terrence Jones fumbling right at the one-yard line. Rodney Hunter fumbling right at the one-yard line. The second and third times they touch the football. From the 35, Terrence Jones the pass being hurried. Finally gets it off, and Zeno nearly got a hand on it to make the play, but it's knocked away nicely on double coverage from Clint Normore and Randall Cooper. And this young man right here, Mark Zeno, who's had a nice night, will be closely scrutinized the rest of the way home. That's just a good play from all parts of the Shocker defense. A good rush. A great job on the uh, from the backs. You can't ask for a better defense than that. Play only took four seconds on the incompletion. Stop of the clock. 3.52 remaining. Shockers lead by one. on the play getting in there Mark Duckins oh that's that's just what can you say about that job Mark just put his head down and gave it everything he had and blew the uh, the offensive man away from him what a big defensive play for Wichita State just when they needed it Duckins absolutely used the center Ralph Wall who didn't even make the play and Duckins <laughs> with his Gastineau you got it so that sets up a third down 19 yards to go. Shockers will probably be playing a prevent. They certainly should be. They can't give up the big play now. Looking for Zeno man to man. Jones has to start the pocket at the five. Finally gets it up. And it's almost picked off on the play. And Wichita State will get it back. There is a flag on the play. And my guess is going to be defensive holding against Randall Cooper. I'm just throwing that out. He was all there. over Dave's or all over Mark Zeno. And if that is the call, it'll indeed give Tulane a first down, but 
Uh, Bruce, I think it's against them, and let's hope it is. The defense just, you can't ask for a better job this series of downs. And we'll get the ruling coming up. Okay. It's against Wichita State, and holding oh, is the boy. call. And I would wager that it's against number 30, Randall Cooper. And here's the ISO on it. That, my friends, you cannot do. Oh, that's about as... Well, he tried to play it off, but that was pretty flagrant. Well, he stayed with him and gave him a few good licks, but that is an awfully big play right there. Holding on the defense, third down. Not an automatic first on the play. It is a third and nine instead. So instead of third and 19, it's third and nine for the Green Wave. Boy, that's just a shame. The play wasn't even designed to go that way as Jones rolled off to his left. Zeno wasn't even in the passing route. No, and it's got to be frustrating. But then when you have somebody like Zeno up, up against you, you probably figure you have to do everything you possibly can. So here's a big third and nine right now. They have a chance for added life. Zeno is there, and he's out of bounds. Out of bounds. So Wichita State's going to get the football. Don't throw the ball. Randall Cooper tossed it back at him. Zeno made the catch. Let's take another look on the isolation. There's the bump. You've got that within 10 yards, staying with him. Good pass defense. Makes a nice move to the sideline. And the ruling is, did the man knock him out of bounds? And the official says, no, it was his own momentum. Oh, close call. And a very, very <laughs> close call. <laughs> well, they say it all evens out in the wash. There's a couple of close pass interference plays against Wichita State, but certainly Mac Brown is going to take a good long look at that call. Wish he had a chance to get it back, but as it is, Tulane's got to kick it away with 255. Anthony Hardy deep to kick. Will receive the punt from Chris Scott. The key here is to catch the football and hold on. Off the side of his foot. And it gets a Tulane bounce. And finally bounds out of bounds at about the 24, just inside the 25-yard line. So that's where Wichita State will start. Smelling victory? They should be. They're up one, 21 to 20. They've scored all three touchdowns in the second half. What a big win this would be for this program. Oh, this would be a tremendous win for the program. There's still 2.48 to go, however. Tulane has two timeouts. We need a few first downs just in the worst way possible. Offense should be rested, although I'll tell you, David Smith with 29 carries. He's going on adrenaline out there. First down from the 25. It'll be Smith. Big hole, right side. Finally knocked down by Momar. But not before Smith picks up six yards to the 31. And that's the kind of play we need right now. Especially hold on that ball as tight as you can. Actually gave him seven. Good mark by the officials, and so the Sharks have second and three. 224 and counting down. Both teams with two timeouts remaining. They split the backfield. Gilstrap and Smith. Gilstrap knocked down for no gain. Good penetration again by Vince Molmar, who's playing himself a well of the second half. Well, they just blitz everybody on that play. Vince Molmar, the first man there. He got a little help on the play by Dalvin Ben. Third down and five, Wichita State. Like the first down, there's still a minute 34 remaining in this contest. Shocks up by one. Smith on the sweep, cuts it up. Just shy of the 35. If he could have fallen forward one more yard, he'd have had it, but he's not going to get the mark, and Wichita State's going to have to give up the football with a minute 21 left as Tulane takes time off. A tremendous football game. It's had all the elements, Dick Fly. Oh, it sure has. You know, we said when we first came on, we expected this. Unfortunately, uh, we didn't get it the first half. 
don't think the Shocker fans at home and here in the stadium could ask for a better second half than any ball game. 31 points have been scored in the second half of action. 21 by Wichita State, and they lead by one in the contest. When we reconvene after the timeout, they'll have it fourth in inches at the 35. We will see Dave Armagas for the kick. And still and plenty of time to go. Certainly for Terrence Jones. Wichita State on the verge. But of what? I would all like to think success. But we've been in this situation too many times before, Bruce. Ten men on the line of scrimmage, and Armagost is going to see a sea of green coming at him. Maurice Nelson deep to receive what will hopefully be the kick of Dave Armagost. Takes a while to get it off. It's a short kick. Hits at the 40, bounds to the 30. Outrunning the coverage and getting around the corner is Maurice Nelson, and so they will run from the 40, 39 yard line. Everybody tried to surround the ball that time and left the outside lane wide open. They did a good job getting back to recover. A minute 11 left in this contest. Wichita State leads by one. And believe me, folks, it is very conceivable for Tulane right here. We're seeing a new quarterback. Very interesting indeed. Now we are seeing Jerome McIntosh into the football game for Terrence Jones. And it looks like we've got a little hassle. And Jones came back hands. in. You folks having words, probably discussing the menu or something. Something calm and quiet in New Orleans, undoubtedly. On the blitz, Chris Badsyong is coming. Knocked down is actually Terrence Jones. I mistook myself. Chris has done that a dozen times tonight, and this is the first time he got there and just did a good job. I thought we saw McIntosh in there, but it is it still Terrence Jones. So I stand corrected, but Chris Batsyong on the blitz all the way. Here it comes. comes up with a big play. Beautiful, Chris. Just a great job. So Wichita State showing stunt on first down, and that sets up a second and 16. 101 remaining in the contest. It has come down to this. Well, unfortunately, have one of those situations where they stop the game because of the action in the stands. Extracurricular activity amongst the natives. And this is not a good deal for Wichita State. I'd much rather see them just run the ball right now or throw the ball. 21 to 20, the Shockers' big gun. Brian McDonald to Anthony Hardy for 54 yards. Got him going for a 14-10 lead. Tulane came back to lead it. And the Shocks have come back from 20 to 14 to take the lead at 21 to 20 off the hard running of David Smith. Second and 16. Batsyong showing blitz. Here he comes. Picked up this time. Man open on the flat, but overthrown. Overthrown. Eric Ritchie was on the coverage for Maurice Nelson. It was a short pattern anyway as we take a second look. Watch Bad Song come from the near side, but good job. Right? Actually got in his face. Well, he's got him thinking, doesn't he? You bet he does, and the ball wasn't in the area for Maurice Nelson. Third down and 16. Tulane working without timeouts. Here he comes again. And good job. Has time. Now he's going down. And another big sack by Mark Duckins for Wichita State. And this defense has just answered the call. What a fine job they have done in the second half. They've given up the big play on occasion, but they have really played with some character. And as I say, they have continued to improve from week to week. And tonight really may be the apex. Excellent pass coverage in the secondary. On fourth down, they throw it away, and Wichita State will take over. And now, barring a complete and total collapse, the Shockers will have a very big win in the Dome of New Orleans. And what a great feeling this has got to be for those young men in white. Oh, Bruce, I can't tell you what this means to them. You know, they really had their heads down. They lost a couple games they should have never won. The sad part about it is you can look back at our record right now and say what we should be. Well, we're not. We're two and three, an easy chance to be four and one. 
Well, they have come to play tonight against an opponent that certainly is better than a Moorhead State, that is certainly better than a Toledo, or certainly as good as a Toledo. And in this second half of action, they have played winning football. They have controlled the football and done the things necessary. And they're up by one with the ball in 28 seconds. Brian McDonald will go down on a knee. Tulane cannot stop the clock, and that should be it. Wichita State will go to two and three on the season. Ron Chismar has himself a huge win, as do the Wichita State Shockers. Maybe Ron should wear a tie at every game. Could be his lucky tie. We might have started something here tonight. What a fine job by this Wichita State team in the second half. They made the adjustments offensively. They opened it up a little bit. The ground game really asserted itself. David Smith is going to be considered for most valuable player. What a fine job he did. But your heart goes out for this man right here, Ron Chismar, and just a fine job that he and his staff did getting this football team ready to play. 21 to 20. What a good job by this Wichita State club. And for Tulane, it's time for some soul searching. This is an everyday occurrence at Channel 12. Hundreds of groups have taken the opportunity to eyewitness the news and tour the Channel 12 studios. Come out and get to know the people at Channel 12. You will find, just like I have, enthusiasm and teamwork throughout the station. See for yourself while we say, when everything depends on it. Kane. Together. There will be conspiracy. An adventure across 900 miles of escape and survival. A treasure hunt that plunges deep into the earth. A tangled web of crosses and double crosses. There will be conspiracy. Saturday's magnificent movie at 10.30 following Eyewitness News Weekend. Well, decline. we said it would be a track meet, but the starting gun wasn't until the second half, and when it was, boy, Wichita State offensively really opened up and just played a commendable half of football. Oh, Bruce, better late than never. You know, you won't get the smile off my face for another week. <laughs> David Smith was the man with the winning touchdown. Let's take a second look. This young man out of Dallas played an ex exceptional football game all day long. Ended up with uh, around 140-some-odd yards of rushing, carried it over 30 30 times in the ball game, but this was the big one, a five-yard plunge that gave Wichita State the tie. Brad Fleeman with the extra point, his 27th consecutive without a miss, gives Wichita State the big win, 21 to 20. And really, you cannot underestimate what this does for a program like Wichita State. Not at all, and I have to go back to what we said at the start of the game. Once the offensive line decided they could do the job, they took it right to them and won. And defensively, this football team, as we've said, it's almost redundant. They are continuing to improve. Give, have a tendency to still give up the big play, but tonight they tightened up, and when they had to have it, they played great in the last two possessions for Toledo. And you can do that kind of job against this type of team that they faced. You've done an outstanding job. So up next for Wichita State, now back home for Central Florida. Tulane's got to go to Florida State. That oh, is not going to be very pretty. But what about the Shockers next week in Central Florida? You've got to think that they've got all the momentum and adrenaline and positive forces going their way, that they should really be ready to play football. Well, you know, they do have that. But they also had it at the end of the second for the first half against Moorhead State. So now they'd have more than 20 minutes to think about it. They have a whole week to think about it. I think that what this game has done, just for the mental attitude of the players, just might make the rest of the season, even though we face the opponents we face, just might make it a good, solid season. You played, of course, on some championship teams with Hank Folberg at uh, Wichita State back in the early 60s. What does a ball game do for your confidence in a game like this? That's a good question, and it's one out of a clear blue sky. It it does give you the confidence, you know, especially when the only things you might, and I have to look at this from an offensive or defensive lineman's point of view. They sure got the confidence tonight. They should take it and just run it right at them next week. All right, so we'll be interested to see what Wichita State can come up with against Central Florida, frankly, a team on paper that they should be able to control with no problem, but then we said that about Moorhead State. For now, we rejoice in the 21-20 victory over Tulane. Up next for the Shockers on TV, at any rate, the Tulsa Golden Hurricane. That is at November 1st, Skelly Stadium in Tulsa. Dick and I will be on the air at 2 o'clock along the Kansas Broadcasting System. So all in all, tonight...